Today's game on KFJB TV is brought to you by Assured Partners, Boy Scouts America, Edward Jones, Agent Zach Wall, Embers Retirement Community, Honest Heating and Cooling, Jensen Ford, Legends American Grill, Lennox Employees Credit Union, Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown Community College, McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, Pence Appliance and TV, Wayward Social, Zeno's, Wandering Creek, Wells Fargo Advisors, Laurel Diesel Services, Calvin Rock, your Marshalltown IV, Central State Bank. <laughs> to the countdown to tip off your overlook at Marshalltown Bobcats locker room here tonight. It's 5-4, and four, Ames Little Cyclones sitting at 3-0 and oh in the Iowa Alliance North while your Marshalltown Bobcats sit at 4-5, and 1-2 and two in the conference. I'm Dylan Doze, and tonight we're going to see if the Bobcats can overcome Ames. Ames has won 24 out of the last 25 matchups. It's Little Cyclones, it's Bobcats, it's tonight. When we come back, we'll look around the conference and other matchups. You're watching the Countdown to Tip Off on KFJB TV. You're an empty nester closing in on that retirement property. Chances are your plans didn't include mom moving in, but life happens and you do the right thing. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement means caring for yourself and a loved one, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. And welcome back in. As you can see, the Marshalltown Bobcats donning their blue warm-ups, but so is Ames tonight. And, of course, it's in honor and respect of the absolute tragedy at Perry High School last yesterday. Of course, the teams are competing on the field, but we're all Iowans, and we're all here to support Perry High School. When we come back, we're going to have the cat connection, and we'll talk to Coach Brian Murphy as we continue on on the countdown to tip off here on KFJB TV. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress Downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Ready to take the next step in your education? Look no further. Marshalltown Community College is your ticket to endless opportunities. Our dedicated faculty and diverse programs are your pathway to success. Whether you're pursuing a career in healthcare, industry, or earning your AA degree, MCC offers the flexibility you need. We provide convenient online classes and locations in Marshalltown and Grinnell. Picture yourself thriving at MCC. Your journey begins now. Discover more at marshalltowncommunitycollege.com.
It's our Cat Connection on KFJB TV. Trey Sean Brooks with us, and of course, senior for the Marshalltown Bobcats. He's been top 15 in the state in, in assists so far this season in Class 4A. You know, I don't know. Are you a, a Cyclone fan? You, you used to live over in Ames. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Cyclone fan. Yeah. All right, you, I bring that up because you remind me a little bit of Keyshawn Gilbert. I, I saw him over the winter break. He, he's kind of those guys that can drive in, kick out, uh, nail some big shots. Uh, is, is there anything that you model your game after, or are you just out there kind of doing what you know you're going to do best? I mean, yeah, it's kind of a combination, just going out there and just playing my game, but also adding someone else's game to it. So just like watching a college game, seeing what they do can add something to my bag and just go off of that. You, I don't, you don't remind me of Tame and Lipsy, though. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> or as Brynja Brynjansson, the little guard from Ames, right? Uh, what was it like to go against a, a guy like him? Um, I mean, it was a competition, of course, but it's just going against a player like that. You can just um, learn the things they do um, and just go off of it. So, like, he does something. You could learn from that. Next play, he tried to do it. You, you're there. Like, you can learn more from it. This rivalry tonight with the Ames Little Cyclones, how much does this game mean to you and getting after and getting the W? I mean, it's a big game. Um, Apple told us. It was some stat. Um, we played them, like, a couple like 30 times and I think they beat us 26 times so it's gonna be a good game we got to get out there play our hardest and I mean this is a game that we had stamped and we're waiting for so so far the season you know you missed the first four games injury kind of due to football season suffered against Ames yeah. right you know so being able to get back you got the four game winning streak heading in on a hot streak I I, I almost kind of feel like you probably didn't want the Christmas break to, to happen right when it did right yeah, no I did not actually <laughs> I was I was ready we're on a streak I was ready to roll and I was like ah oh, Christmas break <laughs> of course right when I come back yeah, but but things are really rolling. It seems like things are feeling well. Ball movement's really good. Yeah. How do you feel about where your guys are at this this point in the season? Um, I feel like we developed a lot from the first four games. Like obviously I was out, but as a team we've talked, we've come together, we've developed uh, what's our best game, how to play, and I feel like we're doing way better and executing it more. You know, when you get ready for a game night like this against Ames, is there anything that you try to do? I know coaches try to give a maybe a pep talk, that kind of thing, but is there anything as a senior you do to get your teammates ready? Um, it's just keep them locked in, stay focused, um, know when to mess around, know when to not. But it's like we, we got to be on go, so keep them locked in, and then we're ready. Of course, I, I know you played football, playing basketball. What other activities are you involved in as a Bobcat? Uh, I think I might do track again. I didn't do it the junior year, so I'm going to do it th this year. Mm -hmm. I know you've had some interest at the next level. Do you plan to, to play at the next level? Uh, yeah. It's just, well, I'm playing football right now, so I don't know. See how basketball goes and go off of that. Okay. Hey, best of luck the rest of the year. Thank you. All right, that is Trayshawn Brooks, Marshalltown Bobcat guard here on KFJB-TV. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Scouts in Marshalltown go on fun adventures. Scouts learn about the outdoors. Scouts learn character building. Scouts learn citizenship. Scouts learn life skills. Scouts learn to be leaders. Scouts go to fun summer camps, and scouts get a head start in life. Marshalltown has produced over 200 Eagle Scouts in our over 70-year history and have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community. To learn more about joining scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure on! Welcome back into the countdown to tip off. We are with the Iowa Kitchen Company pregame interview, Exterior Plus Home Remodeling, Building Relationships, One Customer at a Time. We're here with Coach Brian Murphy, a new year, 
new Bobcats, the four and five Bobcats take on an undefeated Ames team, at least in the Iowa Alliance North. At the end of uh, December in our Bobcat Live, you mentioned that Ames is kind of where you want to be. They may be a year or two ahead of you. What does the rebuild in Ames look like for you? Well, one of the things you see a lot with Ames is that, I mean, they, they've gone through a lot of the same growing pains that we have, but the thing that they have maintained throughout the whole process is really being attentive to the things they've got to get better at. So when we knocked them off a couple of years in Ames, we were able to kind of trap the sidelines and take advantage of some of the inexperience. Um, and those are things that they've shored up and they're a lot more disciplined in offense. They're a lot more patient than they used to be. And so that's something that, you know, we feel good about ourselves, but obviously the full course, we, we still have to make those strides. So certainly recognizing the shortcomings and then being really attentive to those in game and not just talking about them at practice. And it looks for the Bobcats, you know, when you're looking at matchups, where the advantages might be in the post again with Ellie Hughes, Frankie Long have been great this year, but also that half court defense. Last year you extended that pressure on ball. What do you look to do defensively against Ames here tonight? Uh, biggest thing for us, it's been the same story every night, is you know take care of the ball on offense so that we can play a half court defense. You know we we've said all season we feel really good about our ability to defend any team in the half court setting, but that requires us to take care of the ball. We know what to expect with the press. We've been prepping for it for two weeks, and the question is going to be: Can we basically help our? Can our offense help our defense by getting our uh, giving ourselves a chance to get set uh, every single time down the floor? And when you look at Ames, it's it's really Percival, it's Pankin, and it, it's it's the whole group right there. What really are you looking at from Ames that you're trying to stop? Uh, the number one thing for us in the half court is we've got to stop the initial drive without help. So we know they like to drive and kick, hit some shooters. They, they move the ball really well on the outside. Um, you know, a lot of their players aren't necessarily looking to score inside unless they've got an open shot. So if we can defend without help and force them to try to make a contested shot in the paint, we feel really good about that. But when we either over help or we allow that initial one to get by and require somebody else to step up, that's where we have to scramble. So we've got to be really attentive and really disciplined about not helping unless we absolutely need it. Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck tonight. And that's been the pregame coaches interview brought to you by Exterior Plus Home Remodeling, providing quality service on time, every time. When we come back, we will have the starting lineups. My name's Lake Schultz. I'm the co-owner of Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodels. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. With over 10,000 cars at our disposal, Jensen Ford... Hold on. That's not really how we do things at Jensen Ford. How about... It's never been a better time to buy a brand new... Um, yeah, we don't really do that either. When you're ready to buy a car, we'll be ready to help. Try this. We'll get you in and out faster than a speeding... We don't do that either. At Jensen Ford, we'll take as much time as you need to find the right vehicle. We're not just moving cars, but we're building relationships. Oh, maybe more of a... This is where your family buys their vehicles. There you go. More like that. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. Quality furniture for every room in your home. Pence Appliance and TV. For sales and service of everything appliance, come see the Pence team. Wayward Social. The place for bowling, games, food, and more. Wells Fargo Advisors. Marshalltown. Sports Plus. Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, sportsplustherapy.com. All righty, welcome back in. As you see, getting ready for the starting lineups, and let's do your starting lineups right now. Let's San Vic Enterprises in Marshalltown deliver for you while we deliver you the starting lineups for the Ames Little Cyclones, sitting at 5-4, and 3-0 and in the Iowa Alliance North. Carson Pankin in the junior guard, averaging 9.2 points a game, shooting almost 30% from three. Anissa Verbal, a fellow junior, standing at 5'9", averaging 7.7 points a game and just over five rebounds. Haley Prakashan, a senior, 5'6", senior, averaging 5.2 and a half rebounds. 
And then you have Victoria Williams, the lone freshman in the starting lineup, the 5'3 guard, averaging three points, three rebounds, while shooting just over 20%. And then the girl in the middle is Abby McGuire, the six-foot senior, averaging almost four rebounds a game. For your Bobcats, sitting at four and five, one and two in the conference, coming off a big 59-18 win against Des Moines East before the break. Starting guard is going to be Kinsley Bowie, the 5'7 sophomore, coming back from injury, averaging just over five points a game and almost two steals. Millie Heitman averaging three points, the six-foot guard, along with the wing player, Sydney Capayu, number 30, the 5'7 sophomore, averaging three and a half points, three and a half rebounds. Then you have Ellie Hughes, the power forward, the junior, the lone junior of the squad, averaging four points and six rebounds while shooting almost 50% from the field. And then really just the stir, the straw that stirs the drink, the incredible 6'1 freshman averaging 11.1 rebounds. Frankie Long, she's also averaging six and a half points while having almost three blocks a game. And out of those 11 rebounds, four and a half of those are offensive rebounds. When we come back, we'll have the opening tip off here on KFJB TV. How can you help Marshalltown High School and enjoy a mouth-watering burger at the same time? By ordering the Bobcat Burger at Legends American Grill. Two quarter-pound patties with crisp bacon strips, sautéed onions and melted American cheddar, jack and Swiss cheeses on top of fresh shredded lettuce on a toasted bun. It's absolutely delicious. One dollar from every Bobcat Burger sold is donated by Legends to Marshalltown High School activities. So, enjoy a Bobcat Burger and help MHS. The Bobcat Burger, another exclusive from Legends American Grill in Marshalltown. Welcome in to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social. As you see, number 12, he, number 12, Anissa Percival and Frankie Long jump, and it's going to end up, and it, I believe it's going to go to the Bobcats. Bobcats are going to have it going right to left on your radio dial. Starting lineup again, Kinsley Bowie, Millie Heitman is the starting backcourt as Bowie passes it into Heitman, guarded closely by Percival. Gets it knocked away, stolen away by the freshman Victoria Williams. Brings it across the timeline, guarded by Ellie Hughes. Get the high pick from McGuire, gets into the lane. Long does a nice job of cutting her off. Three ball, no go for Prakashan. Little scoop off the glass, no good. And there's a rebound by Sydney Capayu. Bobcats are absolutely dominant on the glass here this year in the top five in 4A rebounding. Ellie Hughes gets in the post, tries to drop it off, and... Victoria Williams is quick, but she's a little too quick and touches the end line there with her right shoe. Bobcats looking to inbound underneath the hoop. Kinsley Bowie is going to be passing. Bobcats have scored off of this quite a few times here as they see Frankly, Long looking to roll into Heitman. Bounce pass into Long. Long off the glass, no good. Rebound by Ellie Hughes to Heitman. Get it to Long again. Left hand this time off the back iron, no good. And Victoria Williams again pushing the pace. Screams pass. Capayu bump in the bucket. That freshman guard is quick. And that's going to be the first on Sydney Capayu. Williams so far at the line has not shot a free throw. This one is up off the left side. No good. 
and Frankie Long gets all that rebound, and then the Bobcats almost get a turnover. Kinsley Bowie, it's going to be off of the sophomore's leg, and it's going to go back to Ames. That's turnover number one for the Bobcats. Coach Ryan Murphy, it's no secret. Bobcat ladies have really struggled with the turnover, turning the ball over at an alarming rate of 30 a game. We get it over to Haley Prakashaw, top side to McGuire, gets it down low into Percival, gets it over to Prakashan. Prakashan's going to be fouled. They're going to call the foul on the sophomore, Kinsley Bowie. Gets it inside. McGuire's get got it top of the key. Gets it over to Prakashan. Prakashan for three back iron, no good. And Frankie Long with her third rebound. Bobcats clear, 6.25 left to go here in this first quarter. And it's going to be a bad pass. It's going to be knocked away by Williams. And Capeu kind of shields her out. It will stay with the Bobcats. Number 20, Molly Heitman. Millie Heitman's going to bring it across the timeline, gets it to the right side. And it's going to be knocked away by Williams. Williams has been jumping that each and every time. Bobcats have to recognize that the diminutive freshman, though small in stature, has been big so far in this game. She gets the pick there from Percival. Percival gets it knocked away by Heitman. Here comes Capeu and the Bobcats. Capeu gets it past the timeline. Long posting up McGuire, but they don't go to her. Now they get it to her. Extended three-point line. Kinsley Bowie brings it back out to the center court. Gets it knocked away, but able to recover to Hughes. Hughes to Heitman, down to Long on the post. And McGuire, the senior's freshman matchup, and the senior gets the better along there, ties her up, and it's going to go to the Little Cyclones. Really what you see there is Long did not get it in a place of the post where she could effectively score. Got too deep on that. Prakashan knocks over Bowie, but no call. McGuire gets deep in the post. Back out to Prakashan. Pump fake. Takes it into Long. Is able to kick it out to Williams. Great ball movement. Williams into the lane. Over to Prakashan. Prakashan for a three. Back iron no good. Rebound Hughes. Heitman gets it after a little bit of craziness there. Gets it across timeline, but still Bobcats ball. It's going to be a timeout with Coach Brian Murphy. We'll take it with him. Five minutes to go in the first. Little Cyclones 2, Bobcats nothing. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown. Hey Bobcat fans, it's Sydney Capeo and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Welcome back in. It's going to be Bobcats basketball, low scoring affair so far. Three minutes into the ball game, Bobcats two or down two to the Little Cyclones, two to nothing. It's going to be Capeo, Heitman, Long, Bowie, and Hughes still out there. As Capeo drives on Prakashan and it's going to be knocked away by Natalia Deerdorf. She's seeing her first action. It's going to be Deerdorf along with Carson Pankinen still in, Anissa Percival, Haley Prakashan, and Abby McGuire. Bowie's going to inbound. Gets it over to Amara Johnson, who's first into the game. Johnson, spin dribble, up off the... No, doesn't draw iron. Prakashan gets it. She's got her head up. Look to run. Cyclones get it up quickly to Percival. Percival off the glass and good. That's going to be the first on Frankie Long. Bobcats have to do a lot better job in transition. Four 
4-0 there as Frankie Long comes out for the sophomore, Georgia Jansen. It's going to be up, and it's going to be back iron. Good, and Capet comes away with the rebound. Bobcats doing a nice job on the glass here. Ames now fully extends their pressure as Jansen almost thought she walked, but no walk. Hughes gets in the post, guarded by McGuire, and they're going to call a travel on Hughes. Ames did a great job of bringing the help defense from ball side and caused Hughes to move her feet. Pankin is going to bring it across the timeline. Gets it over to Theodore. Or gets it to the lane, drops it off to McGuire, but Hughes is there to knock it away. Brockishon's number 22 is going to impound it from underneath. Throws it to McGuire. McGuire at the elbow back to Brockishon. Baseline drive gets it to McGuire. He swings it around to Percival. Percival guarded by Capay. Gets it over to Deerdorf, guarded by Bowie. Kicks it back to Prakashan. Ten seconds on the shot clock. And there you go. Lights up the three for Payne. And picking in front iron, no good. Bobcats not allowing two shots. They're getting that first rebound and going. Amara Johnson, the freshman, guarded closely by Pankinen, but handles it. Able to split the double team, get it to Bowie. Free throw line. Ellie Hughes back out to Amara Johnson. Gets into the lane, and they're going to call a foul on Aves. One thing you see from the freshman guard as she continues to get more and more comfortable, it's going to be on Pankinen and her first. You see just that aggressive nature. Bowie again, inbound underneath the hoop. It's got Jantz looking to find somebody, and they're going to call that a five-second. Bowie's got to have that that time clock clicking away as Williams coming in, and she's going to take out leading scorer for Ames in Haley Prakashan. Actually, averaging five points a game as Payton in his leading score. Payton gets into the lane, goes by Hughes. Hughes ends up fouling her. Pankinen's going to shoot two from the line. Pankinen on the year, shooting 43.5% for the free throw line. Bobcats do not look like they've woken up from the winter slumber offensively as Ames misses their third free throw of the night. Sophia Hatcher's going to come in, and she's going to go in for the senior, Abby McGuire. This makes Ames very small across the front line. And cannot make either one. That one's going to be off of Ames and be Bobcats basketball. Yes, as Sophia Hatcher comes in, 5'5", five, five, replaced six foot. Well, the Bobcats don't have their tallest lineup out there, but definitely exceed Ames' little Cyclone size. Amara Johnson on the ground. That freshman guard for Ames has been nothing but an issue, Victoria Williams, but she travels. Every minute she's been on the court, she has made things troublesome for the Bobcats. Capayu able to get the basketball, guarded by Thatcher. Bowie's got it. They got a look there. They've got two seconds to get it across. Got to get it across. And they don't. That's 10 seconds. Coach Brian Murphy cannot be happy with the five early turnovers in the first five minutes of this ball game. Four to nothing aims. This is the definition of a dog fight so far. Coach Murphy looking to bring back some starters as well as along with Kenya Moore. Dribble drive, little scoop off the bottom of the back. No good. It's going to be a jump ball between the freshman guards. And it's going to be Bobcat basketball. Tanya Mora along with Millie Eitman and Frankie Long. And this is where Frankie Long came in. And, and Ames coach Cole Cook said, all right, we're, not, we're going to bring back in McGuire. Tanya Moore brings it up, gets it across the timeline, picks it up, gets it to Long. Backside, if she would have looked, she had Jansen wide open. Crossover top of the key. Moore for three, in and out. So close. Rebound, Williams. Here she comes. 
gets it up, overshoots Percival. Percival is on a straight fly pattern, and Williams just had a little too much mustard on the hot dog for that one. 2.22 left to go here in the first quarter. Bobcats still yet to score, but the defense has been good. Rebounding's been spectacular. Four to nothing so far, Ames. Amara Johnson gets it off. She's bumped. Bump, bump, bumped as Jansen is able to save it, but she saves it to Williams. Gets it. Oh, ended the block. The first block by Frankie Long. She averages almost three game. She gets her first of the night. Four to nothing. Two or three left to go. Oh, they're not going to say they're going to call it a foul. Oh, my goodness. That's long second. Fifth of the quarter. So that means two shots, but she was shooting anyways. As a look as Deerdorf misses. That's actually going to be Hatcher misses. Ames, they are really struggling at the free throw line. Otherwise, this one would not be this close. And there they make one. They are now one of six from the line. And Sophia Hatcher is going to pick up her first foul. Ames with that extended pressure. Bobcats have done all right with it, but have not been able to turn it into points. Amara Johnson is able to dribble past it, but then throws it right into a defender. Nice job. That was all just one two by Amara Johnson. There's 18 seconds left on the shot clock. Heitman dribbles in right side, kicks it back to Jansen. Jansen tries to bounce pass it through two defenders. No luck. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Moore picks up the ball, gets it to Mayor Johnson. Five seconds, now knocked away to Jansen. Four seconds, and they're going to get bailed out with a foul on Abby McGuire, number 34, the senior post. Pay is going to be in for Amara Johnson, so it'll be Hughes. It'll be Heitman, Mora, Jansen, Long, and Capayu. He's got to shoot it. Nope, they called the foul. Actually, it's reset shot clock. Heitman out to Mora. Mora lines up another three back iron. No good. She's had two good looks. Nothing falling yet as Capayu gets called for the over the back. And really, Sydney already having one foul. That now her second foul. And the other thing, that's automatic free throws. Bobcats absolutely are shooting themselves in the foot here so far. It's it's kind of been that issue all year long is a lot more skill, a lot more effort. But with that, you're expected a lot more. You're expected to iron out some of those wrinkles. Bobcats have really struggled with the small Small little thing of taking care of the ball, making smart plays. It looks like Prakashan misses the first free throw, makes the second. It is now six to nothing. Ames, one minute to go. Both teams averaging in the 30s. So this game is not going to be a super high scoring affair by any stretch, and it's going to be a foul. And going to call the foul. It's going to be on Sophia Hatcher, her second of the first quarter. And quickly, you will see Carson Pankinen coming in for Thatcher. Hatcher. Bounce pass to Mora. Mora left-handed dribble, guarded closely by Pankinen. Gets it in the corner to Capayu. Capayu looking inside long, long. Making herself available, gets it about eight feet out. And then errantly passes it across, but they're going to say it was knocked away, so the Bobcats still retain possession. 15 seconds to go, and then they just drop it. Another turnover. That's seven turnovers on the Bobcats here in the first quarter. Pankinen gets it over, gets it to Prakashan. Prakashan drops into McGuire, a little two-person game. That's beautiful basketball right there. 8 nothing. Bobcats able to break that press. Bowie looking into 
Long. Long gets it. And she turned away. Big thing is Ames is bringing a second defender, but they're going to call the foul on Prakashan. And Frankie Long, the freshman, is going to get it. They're actually, are they going to call that on Long? They're calling that on Long. And that will be her third foul. My goodness. Prakashan, first one is up, and it's good. Prakashan has her second point as Ames right now in the slowest extending of a, of a fast break or, or of a, a run is now up 10 to nothing using four th free throws to extend that lead. 20 seconds to go, and they're going to call another turnover. Bobcats cannot find the way of getting out of their own way. Crowd start to fill in here tonight as the crowds on both sides, a lot of blue uh, representing and honoring Perry High School, the victims along with the school district going through so much. Mora knocks it away, but Williams brings it back. There's 10 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Williams, number 25, gets it to the top of the key, looking to kick the corner. Purse knocked away by Capayu, and they're going to call the foul on Percival, and I believe that's number five, so Capayu should be shooting free throws with three and a half seconds left to go. And again, the new rule in high school basketball is there no longer is one and ones instead of it being seven first half fouls or in one half foul to one and one, 10 for two shots now five fouls per quarter and it resets at every quarter first one is up and it's good second one is up and good that's the thing Capayu I think has all the the make of being a very good shooter hasn't shot it real well so far are they calling it timeout it's an Ames timeout and we'll take a break with them with one second left to go in the first quarter the equity in your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate the student loan and pay for a wedding. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. Hey, Bobcat Nation, I'm Millie Hetman, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJV TV. Welcome back in. Bobcats down big here in the first quarter. It's 2-10. to ten. Bobcats just scored on two free throws by sophomore forward Sydney Capayu, averaging three and a half points. The game knocked down both of those to get the Bobcats on the board. Really the name of the game for the Bobcats. They've been good on the glass and bad with the with holding on to the basketball. Really, that's this year in a nutshell. Capayu gets it up to Mora, and that'll do it. When we come back, we'll have the second quarter for you. Bobcats down 10-2 to here on KFJ TV. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hey, Bobcat Nation, this is Kinsley Bowie. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. There's head man coach Brian Murphy talking to the Bobcats, trying to get them on the side. They've done a decent job of breaking the press, but a lot of unforced turnovers has really been the bugaboo for the Bobcats. 
Let's take a chance and let's do a quick regional scoreboard update brought to you by Central State Bank. Shout out to Brooksy. Thank you for the heads up. Jeff Brooks back at the studio. Ottumwa 11, Lincoln 6 after one quarter. Mason City number five in the state up on Fort Dodge 23 to 13. Applington Parkersburg 17, East Marshall 6 after one. West Marshall 23, Sadell 4 after one. And Bobcats have the basketball. Get it to Capeo in the corner. She's double team. Bobcats have really struggled with them bringing that double team. And it's gonna be a foul on Bowie. Really, the Bobcats have tried to get out of that. The, the open person is on the back side and they've got to dive and flash to the hoop. Bobcats with yet another turnover and that's Bowie's second of the night. That's three starters with at least two fouls for the Bobcats. Second chance opportunity, Percival gets it up off the front iron, no good. Capeyu with yet another rebound. Capeyu can bring it up on her own. Pankin and she picks up her dribble. Percival and Pankin and able to get it and able to drop it off. And it looks like Hughes gets it and it's just ripped away and it's gonna be a 10 second penalty. Not sure why Capeyu picked up the dribble. Bobcats in a lot of trouble here just being able to make the right choice and really struggling holding on to the basketball. Williams is going to pass it into Pankinen. It's going to be Prakashan, McGuire, Percival, Pankinen, and Williams. Georgia Jansen, Kinsley, Bowie, Millie, Heitman, Ellie Hughes, and Sidney Capayu for the Bobcats. Percival dribble drive, drops it back to McGuire. Hughes cuts her off, gets it out to Pankinen. Pankinen Three ball back iron, no good. Bowie gets a rebound, and here comes Capeyu, guarded closely by Pankinen. Picks up her dribble yet again, gets it to Bowie. Back to Capeyu, and that's a 10 second call yet again. Coach Murphy's trying to get some help here. He's He's trying to do whatever he can to see if the Bobcats can't get 10 and a half seconds to get it over. Pankinen, half court, passes it into Williams, back to Pankinen. Guarded by Capeyu. Percival dives to the bucket, but Pankinen over to McGuire, out to Percival. Lines up a three ball, back iron no good, rebound Jansen. Millie Heitman's going to look to bring it by. This long trap, trapping zone press has been a... Been a bugaboo for the Bobcats for many years. Capeyu gets it to Ellie Hughes, top of the key. Dribble drive off of Percival, gonna be blocked. The junior, number 12, able to use her long arms to knock that one away. Bowie looking to pass that in. Gets it to Heitman, Heitman drops it into Jansen. Jansen, little drop step ripped away by Williams. Bobcats not recognizing that they're bringing a second and third defender to the basketball. Pankinen gets the pick from Percival, now looks to get it to her, but knocked away by Heitman. Great hustle play by Haley Prakashan, and they're going to call it a jump ball, I believe. And the ball is going to stay with the Ames Little Cyclones. Natalia Deardorf's coming in for Anissa Percival. She gets a well-deserved round of applause from the Ames Little Cyclone sideline. Prakashan gets it out to Deardorf. Dropped in by Williams. Out to Prakashan to McGuire, top of the key. She's guarded by Ella Hughes. Gets it out to Pekinen. Nice pump. Drill drive to the lane and good. Bobcats. Freshman host Frankie Long is sitting with three fouls already. She would be a huge asset to the bucket right now. Oh, my goodness. Kinsley Bowie found herself in the middle of a blender and got knocked over, and it's going to pick up the foul. And the foul is going to be on Victoria Williams, her first foul. And that's going to be ripped away by Natalia Deardorf. Bobcats just not treasuring the basketball. Williams gets it across over. Prakashan gets it. Left-handed dribble into the lane. 
spins back out to McGuire. McGuire over to Williams, asks for the pick, gets it. He's in the corner to Pankinen. Pankinen gets the pick from Deerdorf, but it's knocked away by Georgia Jansen. Bobcats doing a lot of good things on the defensive side. But again, with the turnover, Ellie Hughes tries to turn before she secures the basketball. Williams with a buck, and that's going to be a timeout. We'll take it with them. Bobcats down by a dozen with five left to go in the first half here on KFJB TV. Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center. We customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn's Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Penn's Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. As you see coming in, Bobcats find them down. They're down a dozen. They do have the basketball. Bobcats defensively have played really well. They're right where they want to be, giving up on average about 39 points a game. Ames gives up about 40. And really, this game is going to be won and lost in the at that 40-point number, and Bobcats are far from it right now. Gets it to Bowie. Bobcats have numbers. Bowie lines up a three. That's a big bucket from the sophomore number 11. Knocks down a three. Bobcats couldn't ask for more on that possession. It's 5-14. Dribble drive. Prakashan crosses over. Won't get the bucket. What did get the bump is Ellie Hughes is going to be charged with her first foul. Prakashan, actually it's going to be her second foul. Prakashan's going to be back to the line for free throw five and six on the night. Knocks in the first one. Prakashan shooting 55% from the free throw line this year, but so far tonight, four of five. Surprised her numbers down at 55. She's got a nice looking shot. She's five of six here tonight. And Bobcats turn it over again up to Pankin and Amara Johnson's going to be called with a foul. That'll be Amara's first foul. And Pankinen's now going to be at the line. Pankinen on the year shooting about 43.5% from the line. 0 for 2 here tonight. Back iron no good. She's now 0 of 3. Ames Little Cyclones, and she makes her first free throw of the night. It's 17-5. Bobcats need to find buckets. They've got that backside. This is one of the things you can see sophomore Georgia Jansen wide open on the backside. She has got to do a better job of throwing up those arms, communicating to the ball handler that I am open. It's not just about the ball handler making that decision. Those off the ball, you have to be verbal. You have to be vocal. You have to help out your point guard in that situation. Gets it into Amara Johnson. Amara Johnson, top of the dribble, drives left-handed bounce pass to Kinsley Bowie. Bowie gets a pick from Johnson, drops it into Georgia Jansen. Little hook shot up and in. Nice job by Georgia Jansen with the dive cut on the baseline. Brings it up over as Hatcher is going to be fouled by Capeu, and that's going to be her third foul. And the Bobcats are going to bring in Millie Heitman to sub in for Sydney Capeu. Along with Frankie Long is going to come in. So with Frankie Long coming in, Abby McGuire is sure to follow. She, along with Victoria Williams, will come in for Ames. 
So as we look out there, Bobcats are Amara Johnson, Kinsley Bowie, Georgia Jansen, Millie Heitman, and Frankie Long. Drops it into Percival. Great job by Jansen. And the Bobcats rip it away. And it's going to be a jump ball. It's going to be a jump ball. And it's going to go to the Bobcats. That was all about the long arm of the law. Georgia Jansen there. Ames again extends that press. Hatcher's on the front of that press here tonight. Prakashan and Williams all in that backcourt. Amara Johnson's going to be fouled, and that's going to be Williams' second. Actually, they're going to call that foul. Yes, on Victoria Williams, that's going to be her second. Amara Johnson is not bashful about trying to break that press with a dribble, splitting those double teams. Been more effective than other modes we've tried here tonight. Bowie gets a pick from Amara Johnson. Gets it back to Amara, looking into the corner. Oh, she's in no man's land. Gets it to Georgia Jansen, and she's going to be fouled. A nice dribble drive. Bobcats showing some offensive life life here. Amara Johnson did a nice job on the step through there, finding the open Jansen, who took it straight to the basket. One of the best things Georgia does is when she gets the basketball, she does not mess around. She's looking to score. She makes quick decisions. And that first free throw gets all the rim, but most importantly gets the bottom of the net, and it goes in. Jansen with three points here tonight, all here in the second quarter. Bobcats down 17-8. And it'll stay 17 to 8. It's going to say it's off Frankie Long. 328 left to go here in the first half. 17 to 8. Little Cyclones. Little Cyclones 5 and 4 on the year. 3 and 0 oh in the Iowa Alliance North. Bobcats sit up 4 and 5, 1 and 2 in the Iowa Alliance North. And Hatcher is going to be called with a travel. Good defense by the sophomore Kinsley Bowie. And there they bring in Jansen to help break that press. And she gets it across Percival, but off off her foot. Jansen there dribbling with her offhand. She's left-handed, dribbling with her offhand, a little loose with the dribble. For Ames, it's Sophia Hatcher and Natalia Deerdorf, Haley Prakashan, Abby McGuire, and Anissa Percival. Gets it down. Nice cut by Deerdorf but a block by Heitman, and that's where that Bobcats length comes in handy. Amara Johnson weaving her way up the court. Gets it up to Frankie Long, layup good. They broke the press and got a bucket. That's a great job by the sophomore to the freshman. Prakashan just beats it, slithers around Heitman and gets gets the bucket for two. Amara Johnson. Brings it up to Frankie Long. Bobcats doing a better job here in the last couple minutes of breaking that press. Amir Johnson fires up a three back iron. No good. It's going to be off of Percival. He'll stay with the Bobcats. Really like, really like Coach Murphy's decision. Yes, Frankie Long has three fouls, but she's such a matchup issue and really a big benefit for the Bobcats. She's got to play with the Bobcats struggling to score. Gets it to Bowie. Bowie looks at the three, says no. Gets it to Heitman. Out to Amara Johnson. Little crossover dribble. Drops it off to Bowie. Bowie lines up a three. Number two, and she's spelling it out for all to see. One, two, three. Bobcats down six. Crocker shot top of the key to McGuire. Kicks it over to Deerdorf. Deerdorf dribble drives. Meets Georgia Jansen, and it's going to be a block for number 23, who averages almost two blocks a game herself. Millie Heitman, Georgia Jansen going to sub out there. They, those young ladies, those sophomore young ladies, really did themselves a service here in the second quarter. Great job defensively and especially offensively for Georgia Jansen. Hatcher Hatcher with an unforced turnover. Bobcats see if they can continue to chip into this six-point deficit with 1.52 left to go. Bobcats down 19-13. 
Here are the Highway 30 rivalry, Bobcats, Little Cyclones. Kamara Johnson guarded closely by Prakashan. Prakashan tips it away, but it goes to Hughes. Hughes there tried to throw through the double team, and another turnover for the Bobcats. Deerdorf drops it off to Pink, and then Pink on the left-handed layup, good. She's got five here in the second quarter. And that's a foul. The dry air here in the roundhouse. You may have uh, heard some dead space here tonight. I feel like every time I breathe in, it is dry desert air here, and I'm having a coughing fit, so I apologize for those of you listening at home. But Kinsley Bowie... It's going to get to the foul line. It's the fifth team foul of the second quarter. Bowie, first shot, no good. George Jansen's going to come back in for Frankie Long. Bowie looking for another one. That one's pure. The sophomore guard's been really good, especially here in the second quarter with seven points. And it's going to be Bobcat basketball, 21-14, 117 left to go in the first half. Bobcats score 12 points here in the second quarter, much more effective offensively than they were in the first. Heads up play by Bowie to knock it off of Percival's quad. It'll stay Bobcat basketball as Tanya Mora looks to inbound from the far corner. Moore gets it out to Bowie, knocked away, but Jansen's there to retrieve it. She's guarded by Abby McGuire, bounces it back to Bowie. Bowie's gonna get a chance to shoot free throws again. That's the one thing, aim Cyclones, the little Cyclones, very aggressive defensively. It be guys or girls, they're an aggressive, tough bunch. And that's gonna be the second foul on Natalia Deerdorf. And Bowie making them pay at the line. Just under a minute to go, Bobcats down six. Bowie still has one more free throw. And that one's gonna be pure as well. Sophomore guard has nine points all here in the second quarter. It's Amara Johnson, Bowie Hughes, Jansen, and Mora. Ripped through by Prakashan, looks to drop it down, but Bowie's there to cut her off. And that's gonna be a charge. They're gonna call a charge on, actually a five second. And it's gonna be a full timeout. We'll take it with the Bobcats on a tear, only down five. There's a city within a city not far from here. This includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Hey Bobcat fans, I'm Georgia Banson and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. There you see the Pray for Perry shirts. You see blue throughout. A really a horrible tragedy at the Perry High School yesterday. And of course our prayers and all our thoughts go out to those affected and just the overall community. Terrible tragedy. Uh, but one of the cool things again warm-ups Ames is wearing blue shirts as their warm-ups much of the Ames crowd right in front of ourselves are in blue uh, definitely a competition on the court but there's a, a cooperation and a community build uh, outside of this court as we're all Iowans praying for those affected in the senseless tragedy at Perry High School yesterday Prakashan baseline oh she was open for a layup had one and then threw it away she picked up her dribble. Ellie Hughes had fallen. Bobcats, 35 seconds left to go. They can quickly hold it for one shot. Capayu and Heitman are coming in for Johnson and Mora. Down five. 
Bowie looking into Kabeu. Kabeu is able to trip and fall, but get it to Jansen. Heitman gets it, crosses over. That should be a foul on Percival, but no call. Gets it to Kabeu. Kabeu lines up a shot, no good. Rebound. McGuire looks like they had a layup, a little bounce. They put that thing on the deck. There was a layup to be had, but no luck. Pankin in top of the key, guarded by Heitman. High pick for McGuire. McGuire picks the roll. Great job by Hughes, able to get the block there. And it's going to be a blocking foul, and that's going to be free throws. He sure waited a long time to call that foul. Really waited a long time to call that foul. It's when she fell out of bounds, he was forced to make a decision if she out of bounds or a foul. And makes the free throw there. Bobcats down six. And that is Carson's sixth point here in the second. And it's going to be a rebound, and that'll do it. 22-16, Bobcats were down, down by as many as 12, have cut into that lead. When we come back, we'll look at first half stats. We'll talk about the key adjustments, and of course, we'll bring you those sweet, sweet scores straight from the KFC, KFJB studios and Mr. Jeff Brooks. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on News Talk 1230, KFJB TV and 1230 AM. The votes have been tallied and the people have spoken. Central Iowa's home comfort specialist, Honest Heating and Cooling, is honored to have been voted best of the best in HVAC by you and the Times Republican. As a thanks, Honest is offering a 10% off sale, 10% off diagnostics, 10 off tune-ups, 10 off ductwork renovation, 10% off full system upgrades. Offer valid through September. So thanks for voting for Honest Heating and Cooling, where you'll find Amana, America's brand for comfort, Honest. Ready to take the next step in your education? Look no further. Marshalltown Community College is your ticket to endless opportunities. Our dedicated faculty and diverse programs are your pathway to success. Whether you're pursuing a career in healthcare, industry, or earning your AA degree, MCC offers the flexibility you need. We provide convenient online classes and locations in Marshalltown and Grinnell. Picture yourself thriving at MCC. Your journey begins now. Discover more at marshalltowncommunitycollege.com. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Penn Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. KFJV TV presents the Bobcat Halftime Report. Welcome back in. You see the halftime festivities with students shooting from four different spots. We're about seeing some half quarters. That was a front iron. Tell you what, here in about four years, those halftime things at State Farm or at college where they can win tuition, these kids are just getting prepped for that. Why study when you can just practice half quarters? That's how Zach told went through college. But yeah, I see the Bobcats down 22 to 16. At one point, down 14 to 2. Really battled back and made this a game. As when when we come back, we're going to do a quick look at the first half stats, and we will also look around the conference and around the central part of the state for scores and updates. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on KFJB TV. You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. 
you'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, downtown Marshalltown, is open seven a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Today's game on KFJB TV is brought to you by Assured Partners, Power Through Partnership, Boy Scouts of America, Adventure On, Edward Jones, Zach Wall, your financial advisor in Marshalltown, Ember's Retirement Community, Independent Living for Active Seniors, Honest Heating and Cooling. Let the Honest Team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. And we're back. See, the, here looking at the score, or we've got a shot clock that we think is out. So they're working on getting that all squared away. Bobcats down 22-16 here. Two aims in the highway, 30 rivalry. But let's take a moment and take a regional scoreboard update brought to you by Central State Bank. Discover what Central State Bank can do for you. Locations in Ames, State Center, and West Des Moines. Ottumwa, the Bulldogs taking over the rail splitters, 23-9 at half. Ankeny taking on Urbandale up 21-19 at half. Dowling up 21-18 against Waukee Northwest at half. A lot of low scoring. Defensive battles where there's some offense happening is in West Marshall as West Marshall is up 38 to 12 on Sadell. Applington Parkersburg 42, East Marshall 19. Mason City, Fort Dodge and Dog fight. Mason City 32, Fort Dodge 38 half. And Nevada 26. Prairie City Monroe 23, that is also at the half. When we come back, we will have first half stats and a key adjustment to see if the Bobcats can get the fifth win on this young season. You're watching Bobcat basketball here on KFJB TV, and you're listening on News Talk 1230, KFJB AM and 93.9 FM. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. And welcome back. They said, let there be a shot clock, and there was a shot clock. There we go. Everything is good. Everything is kosher. We will be able to see the shot clock. Just under four minutes here before we come back for the second half. See if the Bobcats can make up that half dozen point difference and come home with a huge victory. And not just a rivalry game, but also a conference game as the Bobcats sit at 1-2 and two in the Iowa Alliance North while the Ames Little Cyclones sit at 3-0. and oh. Now for stats from the first half. Looking at the Ames Little Cyclones first, Carson Pankin in number 3, the junior, has 6 points. Sophia Hatcher, number 10, had 1 point off the bench. Anissa Percival did some nice things both defensively and offensively. She also got a bucket for two points. Haley Prakashan had seven points. She averages five on the year. She's already over that average. The real, the the one that jumps off the screen to you is number 25, the freshman, the 5'3 point guard. Victoria Williams had four points, but man, was she everywhere. 
had as many steals as she did points, just pressure, 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 caused many turnovers for the Bobcats. Then Abby McGuire, the steady one in the center, the pick and pop, the pick and roll. She's bodied up the freshman Frankie Longwell all night, plus has a bucket to show for it. She had two. All that together makes for 22 points. You're seeing the Bobcats coming up. And right there, Millie Heitman and Georgia Jansen, the sophomores both had a really good first half. When you look at the Bobcats scoring, Kinsley Bowie had nine points all there in the second quarter on the backs of two threes and three free throws. Georgia Jansen had three points. Sydney Capayu had two points. Frankie Long had two points, and that makes 16. Big, quick adjustment. Hold on to the basketball, but really what that is is they're bringing a double team. They're bringing a double team. You've got to look opposite side court. Look to score once you break that press. They did that a couple times late. Make them get out of that press because you're going to score on the back end. When we come back, we'll be rocking and rolling and ready to see if the Marshalltown Bobcats can take down the Ames Little Cyclone for only the second time in the last 26 meetings. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on KFJB TV. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership of the chamber benefits your business and the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to marshalltown.org. Hey, Bobcat Nation. My name is Frankie Long, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB-TV. And we're back looking at the Bobcats there in their home whites, along with getting ready for that second half. As the clock ticks down on the wing shot clock, both working shot clocks here. Really, as you look at the second half, we talked about when they break the press, you have to look to score on it defensively. Maybe some of the best things that they've done, they have not allowed many second-chance opportunities by Ames. The Marshalltown Bobcats are really good on the glass, and tonight has been just like the other nights, really good using their size and length to get on the glass. Really what it looks to, where Ames has given them a little bit of trouble, they run that pick-and-roll off, that high pick-and-roll, and they're not looking to drive to score off the layup. They're looking to drop it off. Bobcats have been burned that way a couple times. It'll be Ames basketball going right to left. It's going to be Prakashan, Pankin, and Percival, Williams, and McGuire. Bobcats will start the same with Hughes, Heitman, Long, Bowie, and Capayu. Capayu with two fouls, Bowie with two fouls, and Frankie Long with three fouls so far in this game. Percival gets it down into... Banking and now Percival gets the pick from McGuire. Cut off by Long, but Percival's able to get the bucket. Nice body balance, number 12. Heitman gets it into Capayu and back to Heitman. Gets it up to Bowie. Bowie looks back to Heitman, throws it at her feet, but the Bobcats are able to get it over. Oh, looks like a dribble handoff, but she keeps it, and she's going to be fouled by McGuire. Nice little scoop by Kinsley Bowie, this has been her best offensive performance as a Bobcat so far. She's going to be shooting two. She was three of four there in the second quarter. And the rim is kind. In the words of Tim Brando. Bowie looking to see if she can get both sides of the two-shot penalty. And that one's going to be good as well. Bowie's just, I think she, by her senior year, is going to, her skill set and her talent shooting the basketball is going to result in a really fine year. But there's the first bucket as quick by Morgan Wall. Nice little drop off. And Heitman gets it across. Heitman gets it to the cutting Hughes, but Percival rips it off and gets it up to Pinkin. And Pinkin has Williams, but Dribble drives herself. Long 
Finally cuts her off, gets it to a wide open proxy shot for three, and that's just got to kill you if you're Murphy. That dribble drive into the lane caused the whole defense to break down, and Prakashan now is 10. I can get to the center to Bowie. Bowie gets it back to Capayu. Bobcats quickly down 11. Eight throws it right at Wall. Wall didn't play at all in the first half, but with McGuire's with McGuire's foul trouble, and Long is able to block it, but it's going to stay with the bo- or stay with the little Cyclones. 6-11 left to go. Bobcats have not started this second half off well defensively whatsoever as Ames is on a 7-2 run to start this for second half. Gets it into Percival. Percival left hand. No good. Long was able to body her up. And Bowie's got it. They've got, they can sprint across the half court line. Bowie sprints across, gets it back to Heitman around the center circle. Over to Hughes. Hughes pump fake. Looks down to Heitman. Heitman rips. Gets a little shot and good. Heitman, a great job with the rip through. Not always a willing shooter, but has a good shot. Heitman with her first two of the game. 29-20. Gets it to Wall, back to Williams. And then Long says, I'm going to block that too. That's Long's third or fourth block of the night, right around her average. As Amara Johnson quickly comes into the game, for Millie Heitman. Percival ends up throwing it out of bounds. Bobcats get a gift here. See right there, there's Long just ripping it away. Long at 6-1, doesn't even have to jump to get off the ground, uses her, her length and strength to block her third shot of the game. Capayu gets inbounds and picks up her dribble. She struggled with picking up her dribble here tonight. And Williams is able to knock it away, but it's going to stay with the Bobcats as Bowie looks to inbound right in front of Marshalltown's PA announcer. Looking to get it in, and it's going to be passed back to Capayu. Capayu gets it, closely guarded by Prakashov. Gets it over to Long. Over to fellow freshman Amara Johnson. And it's going to be tipped away by Williams. Just to show you what this matchup is going to look like in in three years is I just said three freshmen's name in a row. Williams with Ames is their freshman guard along with Amara Johnson and Frankie Long. Both freshmen for your Bobcats. Bowie looks to a cutting. Gets it up off the glass. No good. Gets her own rebound. They're going to call a travel. Bobcats had an opportunity cutting to this lead. They're coming out the third quarter, and they've tended to do this a little bit this year. Those first and third quarters have not gone well. Wall rolls to the hoop, but Hughes is able to cut her off. And my goodness, we are... And then Ellie Hughes just ripped through and stepped out of bounds. We are really lackadaisical when we get the basketball. They don't go and just tear it. They try, they try, it's the difference between do like a round cut or put your foot in the ground and go. It's just, we're cutting too many corners. Williams gets into the lane, kicks out to Prakashan, baseline dribble drive, finds a wide open Deardor for three. That's good basketball, great rotation. And Deerdorf there to knock down her first shot of the night. Back up, tied for the largest lead. As Mary Johnson gets in, back iron no good. And Prokashan's going to rebound that and get it to Pankin. And Pankin and up to Williams. Now they dribble drive, cut off by Ricky Long. Ellie Hughes able to get the basketball, gets it to Bowie. And Bowie does the same thing over and over again is... She turns without knowing where she's going, and that leaves the ball exposed and an easy tie-up. It's going to be Tanya Moore, Amara Johnson, Georgia Jansen, Frankie Long, and Sydney Capayu for the Bobcats. This is where Capayu's 
got a nice balanced skill set, but Moore not coming to the basketball, and she's going to be called with a foul. Three fifty-six left to go here in the third quarter. Bobcats had a six-point deficit at the half, but lots of mistakes here in the third quarter. Ames has been able to extend that even with senior Abby McGuire on the bench. Crockershawn closely guarded, got away with a push off. Now she gets into the lane and Long just stands her up. And man alive, Crockershawn does a great job of getting into the lane, but when you meet 6'1 Frankie Long, not a lot of good things are going to happen. Amara Johnson's been the most effective guard against this press. And that one... As I say it, doggone it. She turns it over in a quick bucket from Victoria Williams. It's going to be a timeout. Bobcat down big. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on KFJB TV. Since 1967, Jensen Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that has passed down from every previous generation. Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family for generations. We want to be there for your first car. We want to be there for your family SUV. And we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. Hey, Bobcat fans, it's Ellie Hughes, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KJB TV. Welcome back in. You see the Bobcat players. That's going to be their warm here tonight. Pray for Perry shirts, as we talked about all night, both Ames and Marshalltown has been representing blue in honor of the victims and the people of Perry. Bobcats turn it over again as Prakashan brings it across and they're gonna call the foul on number 23, George Jansen, Bobcat sophomore. And that's gonna be George's second as Millie and quickly is gonna run into this and it's gonna be in for Amara Johnson, freshman point guard playing a little bit out of control, has turned the ball over a couple times here in the third quarter. 3.22 left to go. Capayu trying to keep Pankin in front of her, can't. Hatcher tracks down the ball, gets the pick from Wall. Dribble drive into the lane, kicks out to Prakashan, pump fake, drives, bounce pass across the lane to Hatcher. Hatcher gets it over to Deerdorf, gets to the wall top of the key. Crockershot looks into Wall. Now she's got a matchup, and a... Wall's been an issue. Did not play in the first half, but has made nothing but plays in the second half. She's got four, 36-20. And they're going to say, well, Georgia Jansen legitimately lost her shoe and fell. 36-20. Uh, that's the first time I've seen that. As you're dribbling, lose your shoe, and then you slip and fall with a sock. That may be tonight in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen. 36-20, Bobcats have had a lot of opportunities but have not been able to capitalize. Down 16, getting into now or never mode. Jansen gets it up to Frankie Long, and she's going to be fouled by Wall. Jansen's done a really nice job once that press has been broken as a, as a distributor. Long's a chance for her third and fourth point on the night. Long on the year is shooting 48% from the free throw line. First one is too strong off the back iron. And the next one, off the glass, bank stayed open for Frankie Long when you average 11 points, three blocks, and over six points a game. Sometimes you get special treatment, and the bank was open on this Friday night. Long's going to be substituted in as Hughes will now be the person in the middle. Dribble drive, and it's going to be a jump, a travel. They're going to call it travel on Carson. Pankinen 
on the year. She's the leading scorer for Ames at just over nine points a game. She's got nine here tonight. Bobcats looking to chip into this 15-point deficit. 2-10 left to go here in the third quarter. Gets top of the key to Bowie. Bowie drops it down to Jansen between her legs, kicks it down, and it's going to not be the Bobcats basketball as it goes to the Little Cyclones. Looking at his bank and then dribbles across the timeline, gets it to Hatcher. Hatcher crosses over Hughes, and Hughes is going to be called for the foul. It's going to be Ellie Hughes' third on the night. It will be a shooting foul for Hatcher. She was one of two in the first quarter. She's shooting 33% on the year. First one is good. Back up to a 16-point lead. And the second one is no good as Mora gets it and then double dribbles. All right, it will be the Ames Little Cyclones basketball up 16. Bobcats just struggling to get efforts at the hoop. Oh, wow. He was shielded, shielded from that and gave it to Ames. That looked to be off a wall. Percival is going to inbound, gets it into Deerdorf. Now looking back, Deerdorf looking back to Percival. Percival crosses over Jansen, gets in the lane. She's going to be fouled. Bucket's no good, but she's going to get two shots at the line. Percival with her second opportunity at the line. She missed the back half of an and one in the first period. She will now get two more shots on the year. Percival averaging seven points a game for the Little Cyclones. Tonight she has four. Sydney Capeu, Millie Heitman, Kinsley Bowie, Amara Johnson, Ellie Hughes for the Bobcats. It's going to be Hatcher, Percival, Pankinen, Williams, and Wall for the Little Cyclones. Amara Johnson. Turns it over yet again. And now she's, Penkinen's caught underneath. Williams lines up a three. It's going to be an iron. No good. Capeu up there fighting for it. And Bowie comes away with it. Gets it to Hughes off her face. And here comes Ames. Nice little, look, nice little crossover, but gets it caught on the underside of the iron. And here come the Bobcats. Millie Heitman. Closely guarded. Hatcher picks her pocket. And a great block by Millie Heitman. going to stay with the little Cyclones. 37-21, 104 left to go here in the third quarter. Pankinen surveying the land and finally gets it into Williams. Williams left-handed dribble and they're going to call that on Mara Johnson trying to put her hand in the cookie jar. And that's going to be a Mara Johnson second. It will be the fifth foul in the quarter which means with the new state High school rules, that will be two shots for the freshman, Victoria Williams. Victoria Williams on the night, 0 for 1 from the line. And the second one is, her first one is no good. Second one is good. Freshman has five points tonight, but she's been worth about 25 points. She has been tenacious defensively. It's going to be a jump ball, and it's going to go back to the little Cyclones. 52.7 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Bobcats had a lot of opportunities down 22-16 at half, but Ames little Cyclones have just come out ready to put this one away. Hatcher playing a little two-person game with per- Percival. Percival off the glass, no good. Gets it to Hughes. Capeu picks up her dribble, gets it back to Bowie. Bowie gets it over to Hughes. 
and Capayu steps into a three, everything but in. Heitman with a great offensive rebound, gets it to Bowie for three. That's her third of the night. Bowie is caught on automatic. She has got 14 points here tonight for the Bobcats. And then Megan just does a little slalom race and gets two. The foul's going to be on, I believe, Anissa Percival. The junior will pick up her second foul of the night. It's going to be a timeout. We'll take him with it. 6.6 seconds left to go in the third. Bob Cast 16. At Honest Heating and Cooling, they take comfort seriously. Their latest offering? Smart Integrity Monitoring. Combined with an honest maintenance plan, it takes all the guessing out of home comfort. Their technicians take accurate measurements of all the necessary parameters and deliver you the truth about where your home's comfort stands. If you're not measuring, you're just guessing. That's honest. Get a smart integrity monitoring plan and let the honest team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. Honest Heating and Cooling. Hey, Bobcats. This is Aubrey Tejada. You're watching Bobcat Festival on KFGB TV. Welcome back in. 6.6 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. I am now joined by the illustrious Brandon Bill Walton Lewis. Well, Dylan, last night I was in Arizona, and I tell you, the Buffaloes got stampeded by the Arizona Wildcats. But I'm up here in Marshalltown tonight, and we've got Bobcat basketball. They're trying to do it, Dylan, but... I don't know if they've got it here tonight, but this is the Conference of Champions matchup, and we'll see if the Cats can do it. They've got six seconds here. Yeah, Bobcats looking at Kinsley Bowie's a good place to go. Oh, my goodness, and a carry. That's where Bowie, you'd love to see her look for a shot a little bit. 0.7 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. See if Percival is going to give it the old college try here. And that's uh, not going to count. Too late. Bobcats down 40 to 24. We've got one quarter left. See if the Bobcats have two more lives in them and can fight back into this one. Bobcats down 40 24. You're watching Bobcat basketball here on KFJB TV. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hi, I'm Amir Johnson, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. We're back here inside the Marshalltown Roundhouse. The cat dancers are going crazy. Dylan D, 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 he's going crazy. He's losing his mind without me tonight, but I'm back in the saddle. It is, uh, I'm so happy you're back in the saddle. <laughs> With the dissolution of the Pac-12, we are now We have now bestowed. claimed Conference of Champions. Conference of Champions. Yeah, I mean, we're... Copyright we're, pending. Iowa Alliance <laughs> Conference is a new conference, so I yeah, figured, right. you know, is the demise of the Pac-12 is our game. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Kinsley How Bowie, are you? closely guarded. I'm good. How are you, sir? Good. I, You know, I really thought Bobcats were going to have a, a really good shot here in the second half, but Ames has shown that one year plus of experience, and it's paid off for him here in the second half. Yeah, we were talking with uh, Coach Coach Brian Murphy at Bobcat Live at the end of December. He, he had talked about how Ames is just about a year ahead of them, and they're seeing yeah. it. And, and you see it here tonight. Is th They're not the ones making – the careless turnovers. And then it's going to be off Prokhor shot. It's going to go to the Bobcats, see if they can chip into this lead. You also look at the Bobcats. Right now, Frankie Long is probably their most intimidating player, and she has played nine. This is her 10th high school basketball game of her career. Yeah, it's uh, still coming together, but uh, you really like what you see for the future, that's for sure, with all these freshmen and sophomores. And Millie Heitman drops in, can't make the bucket. Nice little drop step there. 
We are seeing a career night here tonight from number 11, Kinsley Bowie. The sophomore guard has 14 points, has three three-pointers here tonight. McGuire gets it to Williams. Free throw line, Percival. Shot won't go. Amara Johnson clears. And she gets the pick from Bowie. And absolutely, they're not breaking the press with any rhyme or reason. They're not passing or getting to their points with any rhyme or reason. And it's making for a lot of unforced turnovers. By the way, speaking of Bill Walton last night, um, Colorado got absolutely destroyed by Arizona. Yeah, I was, I was, I was uh, a little sad last night. But Bill Walton was on there, and then Frank Caliendo came in and did his best Bill Walton impersonation. And it was uh, absolutely hilarious to watch Dave Pash try to control himself in that situation. I, I did watch. I was watching some of that. You know, <laughs> we here at KFJB TV, we always have a soft spot in our heart for the Buffaloes due to Brandon's allegiance there. <laughs> Amara Johnson gets caught again on the baseline. It's going to be a jump ball. It's going to go back to the little Cyclones. It feels a bit, if you went out on the court and you drew big red X's about where not to dribble against a trapping press, we go exactly to those red X's. Yeah, and, you know, still plenty to learn. And right here, there's a big lane that opened up. Boy, I'm surprised they didn't go for it. But a good and kick out. Three-point drops in the bottom of the bucket, and that will be the 11th point for a scorer Carson Pankin and the junior starting to heat up a little bit. You know, one thing about the Bobcat offense, you know, they've really struggled at times. They they played okay in the, I think it was the second quarter, kind of got themselves back into this one, but usually young teams, you see defense as we see a double dribble here by Bowie and a turnover by the Bobcats, but correct me if I'm wrong, Dylan, usually defense when you're younger struggles, right? And that's one thing that hasn't struggled a ton this year for the Bobcat ladies. They've been pretty good, especially rebounding on defense, but right there you saw that little lapse in the paint and no communication and somebody just drives, you know, unguarded into the paint. Well, that, yeah, defense usually, it's all about hustle and location as yeah. Percival just drive, just drops down and gets a bucket. And, and really, the Bobcats have that toughness. They, they do lock in defensively. It seems offensively is where they take their mental rest, which is not what you need. Mm -hmm. Ames is a well-oiled machine. They, have, they do pick and rolls all across. Doesn't matter what the matchup is. They're looking to pick and roll for open layups left and right here tonight and ripped away by Williams, who travels. Yeah. But she has at least seven steals tonight, and I think I am underselling her. She's been fantastic. 45-24 is her score here, and I think we have a t – did we have a timeout on the floor? No. Does not look – no, okay. it's going to be Bobcats basketball underneath their own goal. Bobcats – historically have done well scoring off inbounds plays under their hoop have not here tonight gets it to Capayu top of the key Georgia Jansen takes one dribble not able to make it little cyclones get on the ground it's going to be Deerdorf and Jansen and it's going to go to the Bobcats good hustle Jansen saw that ball ping-ponging around and had the good hustle play Seems like Sydney's still also, I've seen a few jumpers from her tonight, still adjusting to her new role and also that sometimes I feel like that knee brace on her left knee is still bugging her at times as she has dealt with some lower leg injuries. I know last year she dealt with uh, ankle injuries. Yeah, it, the jump shot looks a little rigid right now, not as fluid as we've seen at different points. Again, knocked away and it's going to be a cheap foul on Ellie Hughes. I believe that'll be Ellie's fourth on the night. Just got you with a hook right there, getting your pin. I Sorry know, about I, that. I about, I about had a standing eight count here. Uh, by the way, how was your new year? Happy new year. Hope you had a great one. It, it was good. It was uh, one of those where I wasn't mad and back into the office. So, <laughs> And you uh, celebrated your anniversary? Yeah, we made it a whole two years now. That's uh, five this month, though, overall. Well, you know, when I married you, I gave you a warranty. It's a manufacturer's warranty for two years. <laughs> the rest of the years are on you. <laughs> we'll see if a, a, a baby into the mix here in a month will gel us even more. That's what I say. Babies make everything easier. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, it's going to be it's tied. the opposite, but yes. <laughs> it's going to be tied up, and it's going to go back to the Little Cyclones. Little Cyclones going deeper into their bench with Jada Britton is coming in for Anissa Percival, who's been quite good tonight. Not a ton of scoring, but she's been ever super active. So much 21 got a lock in here in the final four. Hatcher gets right into the lane, looks to kick out to Pankinen, but it's going to go off of Kinsley Bowie. Also, you know, I, you know, my wife and I, I think we were meant for each other. We, we can put things together without arguing. We figured out our baby name very easily together. Well, it's when you have a, such a good friend like Dylan, the name just writes itself. <laughs> Pankinen gets the jumper in the lane. She gets the nice friendly roll for two. She's now up to 13 points, seven and a half. Not too many women named Dylan, though, I've noticed. There is the Dylan's Candy uh, candy Bar in New York City, the famous candy store. Oh, really? Not named after a woman, but it's candy. No, it's a woman named oh, really? It's not female candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 47-24, three minutes left to go. As she's going to be out of bounds, Deerdorf goes out of bounds. Little known fact, she is Dan Deerdorf's uh Oh, really? Oh, you that's confirmed not, that. Wow. That's not true. <laughs> that's not true. So 47-24, this uh, definitely this will be interesting to see later in the year because these teams will match up uh, in early February. How, how much, you know, a little bit more conference action and getting back into the grind will get these ladies maybe – a little bit more fit for that next matchup on the road. Yeah, and, and you think with Coach Murphy and, and the assistant coaches, this really is a point where we have seen great strides in certain games where they're just much, much better, but then they get caught in these closer games where they are not yet at the point where they're making winning plays. Yeah. Sydney Capayu gets beat down the court by Macy Button, who puts it right on the button with a bucket. 49-24, Bobcats just getting shelled in the second half. Corner to Tejada, pump fake, back to Bowie. Bowie dribbles around the horn, looking, looking. Hands it off to Heitman. Heitman looking in, in the post and gets it. Tejada able to get it off the bounce. Capeu, baseline drive, reverse layup, no good. Nice defense by Button coming over. Hatcher clears, and here she comes. No relation to Benjamin, I'm uh, guessing? I don't believe so. I have not okay. confirmed that. Okay. And you know that I will not make baseless claims about relations. Well, I know Ken Hugie told you a long time, never let the facts stand in the way of a good story. That's right. That's, well, yeah, and you've got to live in Hugie's huge shoes, so you've got to fill those. They are, they, yeah. Very, very big feet for L that guy. Little known fact, he you know what gave they Shaq his first pair of shoes. <laughs> you know what they say about guys with big feet? Big shoes. That's right. Yeah. And you can find them more easily at TJ Maxx because they always have a bundle of size 15s. <laughs> Billy Heitman bringing it across for the Bobcats. Just under two minutes to go here. Hughes guarded closely. Tejada gets the top of the key. Amara Johnson fumbles with the basketball but is able to get it back. She's going to be guarded by Jada Britton. Tejada gets it baseline now to Amara Johnson to Ellie Hughes. Wide open Georgia Jansen for three. Back oh. iron no good. Heitman's going to track it down, but it's going to end up being off of Morgan Wall. Should stay with the Bobcats. And I saw about seven bounce passes there on that possession. We're still leading the, the Conference of Champions in that category. But good ball movement right there for the Bobcats. At least kind of work it around the perimeter, find something inside. Mara Johnson kind of just looking in, gets it to Hughes, bounce pass into Heitman. Heitman a little drop step yeah. up off the glass. So here's the thing with Millie Heitman. Mm -hmm. We talked to her. We asked, hey, do you like to shoot the basketball? Uh -huh. No. No. But you see the footwork Does here she like tonight. to talk? No. No. But she has been a multiple time uh, guest on her show. She's getting Is more she getting talkative. better? Yes. She's getting more and more talkative. <laughs> but then you see some of that offensive skill on that step through there, the drop yeah. step into a step through. She has some offensive skills, and I think she needs to utilize those more here in the second half of the season. Yeah, this Bobcat team just continues to 
improve. And to your point, you know, a couple of years from now, it'll be really good to see how that that move to pay off. It'd be hard for a lot of girls in the Iowa Lions Conference to guard that. Sophia Timmermans misses her first shot as Ab Aubrey Tejada returns the favor. Gets it out to Hatcher with 45 seconds left to go. She'll pull it back out. And there's going to be a traveling call on Hatcher. And it's really a substitution travel as Hatcher comes out. And in her place is going to be Meredith Franzen, the 5'5 sophomore. Franzen gets the basketball. Look, gets it to Brent. Left hand drive, gets it to Wall. Wall's going to lock. Three back are no good. Jansen gets it and gives it to Heitman. 32 seconds left to go. Bobcats down 23. Really struggled here in the second half. Amara Johnson steps into a three. She's not going to get anything, and it's going to be out on the Bobcats with 23 seconds left to go. Good learning lesson here tonight. And, you know, I think Coach Murphy's talked about it. You know, getting in those tight games, you look at the Des Moines North game. You know, they were up by 10, 12 points. North comes back in it, but they closed it out. This is kind of one of those things where, you know, you did all that work to get within five points at halftime and then kind of let up too much in the second half and let let a team kind of bully you around just a little bit here. And, and those are those things you'll learn from as Ames turns it over here. And you look at the Bobcats really struggled. Where they had the advantage was in the post and in that first half. Just foul trouble. Frankie Long with three. Capayu with two. They really struggled. Keeping them on the court. Heitman gets it to Jansen. One second to go. Put shot up. No good. Bobcats will fall to four and six. One and three in the Iowa Alliance North. Ames will go to six and four. And four and oh in the Iowa Alliance North. When we come back. We will go into wrapping up the girls' basketball game and start to look towards the boys' basketball game. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on KFJB TV. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Hey, I'm Harper Wilson, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Welcome back in. Bobcats down six at half. Cannot keep it close as they lose 49-26 to and fall to four and six on the year. A bad loss to Ames, but they will get a chance to face them later this year. Another growing lesson for the Bobcats. When we come back, we will have for you the locker room report here on KFJB TV. Some drivers trade cars every year or every other year. Some drive their cars till they drop. Whatever kind of driver you are, Lennox Employees Credit Union is here to get you into the car for your style of driving. You're invited to go to our website, lennoxecu.com, for membership eligibility and loan rates, or call the office to talk to a loan officer. The loan process is quick and easy. Low auto loan rates from Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member and Legends American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. Ribeyes and sirloins, aged, hand cut, and served with your choice of two of Legends' legendary sides and a dinner roll. If you are a prime rib fan, Legends has prime rib every Friday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. With three sides to choose from, it's chef seasoned and slow cooked to tender, juicy perfection. Try Legends American Grill, and you'll know why it's Marshalltown's favorite. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. The KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Welcome into the Locker Room Report. Here, Bobcats go down 49 to 26. Ames Little Cyclones were led by 13 points from Carson Pankinen. And then for the Bobcats, Sophomore guard Kinsley Bowie on the back of three threes ended up with a game high 14 points. When we come back, we will have 
area scoreboard from Central State Bank. You're watching the Locker Room Report here on KFJB TV. You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. There's a city within a city not far from here. This city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise, and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. This city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one, and two bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by Jensen Ford, with you every mile along the way. Legends American Grill, Marshalltown Steakhouse. Lennox Employees Credit Union, LennoxECU.com. Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown, more than ever. Marshalltown Community College, a step in the right direction. Welcome back into the locker room court here at the Marshalltown Roundhouse. Bobcats girls fall 49-26. But now it's time for your original scoreboard brought to you by Central State Bank. Discover what Central State Bank can do for you. Locations in Ames, State Center, and West Des Moines. Nevada loses to PCM 49-48. Des Moines North takes out Des Moines East 70 to 29. Atumwa rips apart Lincoln 55 15. And Mason City stretched out their lead and defeats Fort Dodge 57 47. Dowling 43. Joaquin Northwest 33. And again, Marshalltown falls to Ames 49 to 26. Now it is time for our KFJB TV player of the game presented by Calvin Rocket Barn Grill of Marshalltown. And it was a Call started in that second quarter. Back to back three pointer, sophomore guard number 11, Kinsley Bowie, was lights out on the offensive end tonight. Had three three pointers and hit five points from the line. It all came out to be 14 points for the sophomore. And when we come back, we'll switch turns and we'll go from the locker room report into the countdown to tip off. You're watching Bobcat basketball here on KFJB TV. Hey Bobcats, this is Garrett with Calvin Rocket. I'm happy to partner up with KFJB and continue the tradition of Bobcat Player of the Week. Follow us on social media for all your Calvin favorites, new specials, and exciting news that's coming down the road. Stop on in and give us a try. We're open Monday through Thursday, 11 to 9 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 11 to 10 p.m., and Sundays for the NFL season. We'll see you at Calvin Rocket and Bobcats. Planned and saved for your child to go to college. The medical school after graduation was a surprise. A happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. It's Adventure On for Marshalltown Scouting. Adventures like backpacking, zip lining, rock climbing, canoeing, swimming, and more. Survival skills for a scout's greatest adventure, life. Scouts give back to the community. Marshalltown Scouts have provided over one million hours of service to our community in our 70 plus year history. Scout leaders are highly trained in screen. Parents are a huge part of scouting too. Scouting provides unique opportunities available nowhere else. To learn more about scouting Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure on. Welcome to the Countdown to tip -off on your home for the Bobcats, KFJB-TV. 
Welcome into the Roundhouse. It is the boys' game. We are getting you ready for it here on KFJB TV. Brandon Lewis, Dylan Dose, alongside me tonight. We've got a really good one. Two teams that have really packed a punch early on in the season. Bobcats rolling in the right direction. They've got Trayshawn Brooks back. They are 4 0. They really are. Bobcats are playing some of their best basketball, and they've got a big matchup here tonight. Ames has been the crowning jewel of this Iowa Alliance Conference, just two years removed yeah. from a state championship team. You know they're going to be tough. You know they're going to be long inside, but the Bobcats have found their groove. Trayshawn Brooks, as he's been back in the starting lineup coming off injury, they're 4-0, and that offense is moving. It is almost like a flow of water, and – all capped by eight three-pointers the other night against Des Moines East from sophomore Kyle Smith, who is leading the Iowa Alliance in scoring and up there in rebounds. Yeah, and of course they're going to take on Vance Downs. Feels like he's been coaching at Ames for a million years, but he's in his 20th year. He knows what he's doing. He got a team that we didn't quite think was going to get to the state tournament last year. Got him there, and he's got length back on his side of things rolling into the season. We'll get that coming up next in your... Uh, Keys to uh, tonight's game as we preview Ames and Marshalltown. It's the Highway 30 rivalry here on KBE TV. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so pay for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. We are counting you down to tip off tonight here on KFJB TV. Brandon Lewis, Dylan Dose alongside me. Let's get Dylan's keys to the game tonight as the Bobcats and a little Cyclone square off. Really, when it comes to the Bobcat, Bobcats, Bobcats have got to get teed up. They've got to get teed up. And what I mean, there's three T's here. First and foremost, to get teed up, you have got to be tough. You will not beat an Ames Little Cyclones team if you are not tough. And then you got to look in transition with with Dow in the middle for Ames. He averages about four blocks a game. You have got to look for points in transition because Ames' half-court defense is suffocating. They pressure the ball, and they have length and shot blocking on the backside. And then finally, when you just look at that, you have got to get both transition and then going to come down to threes. Bobcats are going to have to be able to knock down threes, not just from Kyle Smith, but Carter Gianetto from from the other people across the board. There has to be people filling it up. And then when you're in Ames, is winter is coming. And winter has been. Jack Winter has been there since 1987. He has been <laughs> on this team forever. But he has provided, he was a great off-the-bench spark for their state championship team. And now he's a great leader for this very good Iowa Alliance North leading team as he's averaging about 16 points a game and shooting at a clip of over 40%. But the thing is, winter is coming, but he brings his friends with him. Yeah. You look at Jamison Poe's an issue. He is a he is a lightning quick guard, 5'11", 5'9", and tough. And then you also have Will Thomas, who's just been very good in that assist area. Abram Voss brings a lot, but the name that I want to look at is Marak Dow. Mm -hmm. He is somebody that the Bobcats haven't seen. He is a legitimate rim protector on the back of that defense. And he will be a lanky guy to deal with. 6'7", and just a sophomore. That is our keys to the game here tonight. Coming up next, we'll chat, too, with uh, head coach Mike Apple in his sixth year for the Marshalltown Bobcats. This is the countdown to tip-off. You're watching KFJB-TV. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Penn Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team.
Welcome back into the countdown to tip off here on KJB TV. I'm Brandon Lewis, now joined by head coach Mike Apple as the Bobcats take on the Little Cyclones of Ames tonight inside the Roundhouse. Coach, your team four and four at the midway break, heading in on a four game winning streak, moving the ball really well. You've got Trayshawn Brooks back. Kyle Smith is knocking down seven, eight threes a game right now. Things going in a really good direction. How do you keep that going? Yeah, I think it's just been, you know, the message during break is just be consistent in what we're doing in practice and then bring it every day and try and get better, you know. And I, we had a stretch there this break where I really felt like each day we got better. And, and that's, great to, uh, that's great when that happens. It's amazing to see because sometimes you almost see a little bit of a different team come out in the second half. Doesn't matter what school yeah. it may be. We saw that a little bit with Des Moines East last year. I felt like they were a little bit of a di better team in the second half. This is a – it can be a pivotal point in the season, right? Yeah, it can, you know, and, and from everything that our coaching staff has seen and, and from our guys and how hard they've worked, um, we're, we're looking to see good things on Friday. It can get a little bit uh, – of a mystery just because you haven't played in a long time. Um, but you got to make sure you prepare and get your minds right and, and, be, and be ready to play a basketball game. You know, those Smith boys, they're playing pretty good right now. It seems like it'd be hard to keep them out of the, yeah. the gym even during a break like this and, and wanting to keep that shot hot. Um, you know, is that kind of what can be said about this entire team? Yeah, I mean, it really is. It's a, it's a team that enjoys being, you know, in the gym. And, you know, we gave them f about five days off there kind of after our last game there. And, and, you know, I know guys were getting in the gym. And it showed when they came back they were in good shape and they are ready to go that first practice after, after Christmas. Coming off a 73-32 win against Des Moines East, speaking of them on the road, 27 points in the third quarter. Might have been the best team I've ever seen you have in that third quarter alone coming out of a halftime break. You know, what, what does that say about your team and being able to, to keep the, the foot on the pedal in a game that you were winning already at that point? Well, I think our guys are understanding just the emphasis of, of every possession matters, on, you know, and getting stops on defense and how important that is for us. And uh, our effort's been great there, you know, and, and ever, ever since we really switched to kind of just man, back-to-man principles, you know, our guys have really responded well to that and, and really guarded well. Um, and, that's, and that's one of some games. And then, you know, offensively, we've gotten into really good rhythm. Guys understanding, you know, um, their roles, understanding when to attack the rim, and then getting guys open shots, you know, like Kyle and, and our other guys that have the ability to shoot it well. I know this one's a little personal for you tonight between the Ames, the Little Cyclones, and the Marshalltown Bobcats. Both teams 3-0 and in Iowa Alliance Conference North action here tonight. These are two of the top teams, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Ames, Ames has proven that year in, year out. So um, we're going to have to be ready to go. We, we understand the team they are and, and how good they are on defense and how well they execute on offense. Uh, so we need to kind of match that and be ready. And, and, and um, just those two things right there, you know, you know, getting stops on defense, executing on the on the offensive end. You know, I'm going on five years now of broadcasting Bobcat basketball, but it feels like Vance Downs has been there for 300 years. I mean, he, he's a he's a mainstay. He was, he was coaching when, when you were there when I played. Yes, yeah, yeah he's he's a. Uh, if not the best coach in the state, definitely definitely one of the top coaches in the state. You know, I have a lot of respect for him and what he does um, year in year out with the, with the players he has. Um, you can just tell the you know, the, the preparation that goes into each game. They're very prepared. They understand what they do. You know, each guy understands their roles. Uh, that's, that's what makes them really hard, you know, as a team. Yeah. And last question for you, Coach, it was just that point that he does well with no matter the team. They had some length and size over the past couple of years. A little bit of a smaller team, I guess you could say, this year, especially with their guards. But this is a team that is going to get out and hustle and go get after. What's, what's the biggest thing you know you have to take care of tonight to, to get the win inside the roundhouse? We have to take care of the ball, number one, and then execute our offense. You know, they're a good defensive team, so we can't give them free points. Uh, where we're turning it over and they're getting easy baskets. We've got to make them work for every, every basket that they get and then execute on offense. Best of luck tonight. Yep, thank you. All right, it is the Little Cyclones and the Marshalltown Bobcats. We'll get your starters coming up next right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB-TV. My name's Lake Schultz. I'm the co-owner of Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodel. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. 
Today's game on KFJB TV is brought to you by Assured Partners, Power Through Partnership, Boy Scouts of America, Adventure On, Edward Jones, Zach Wall, your financial advisor in Marshalltown, Embers Retirement Community, Independent Living for Active Seniors, Honest Heating and Cooling, let the Honest Team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. Tip off from inside the roundhouse is coming up next. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB TV. You're an empty nester closing in on that retirement property. Chances are your plans didn't include mom moving in, but life happens and you do the right thing. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement means caring for yourself and a loved one, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. the Highway 30 rivalry on KFJB TV. Eight minutes on the clock. We are underway between the Little Cyclones and your Marshalltown Bobcats as Marike Dow wins it against Corey Smith on the tip. Here's a three early on. It's no good off the left wing for the Ames Little Cyclones. It rebounded out by Carter Giannetto. Hands off to Trayshawn Brooks over the timeline as we are underway inside the roundhouse. Bobcats to their white tops and bottoms. Ames in their black tops and bottoms. Trey Sean down the right side of the paint, picks up his dribble, back out to Giannetto, top of the key. Dribbles to the right wing, back to Trey Sean Brooks. A former Ames Little Cyclone himself, kicks out near side, Corey Smith. He'll give it back to the other senior on the team, Rahelio Sarin in that starting lineup. Up and under, and through, and Rahelio gets it to drop in for two. Huge bucket for the senior right there, as we have 50 seconds gone inside the roundhouse. Cats leading two to nothing. Great step through on the 6'7", sophomore. Good bucket from this crafty senior. Two to nothing, a bump out high. And let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. All brought to you by Sandvik Enterprises in Marshalltown. Let them deliver for you while we deliver you the starting lineup. As you look, Jack Winter, Jameson Poe, Will Thomas, Abram Voss, and Marich Dow, the starters for Ames. Meanwhile, for the Bobcats, getting the go tonight, Carter Giannetto, Treshawn Brooks, Kyle Smith, Corey Smith, and Rahelio Sarin. That is our starting lineups here tonight for the 4-4 Bobcats and the 4-2 Ames Little Cyclones. They're on a two-game winning streak. Bobcats on a four-game winning streak. And driving down the right side of the paint is Will Thomas. He averages five points per game. He has his first bucket of the night to tie us up at two apiece. Great pick at the top of the key, and he just came like a locomotive downhill straight to the rack for two. Six and a half minutes to go. Sean Brooks in the opening quarter of play. Got a little wide with it. Now backdoor cut. It's on the baseline. Last touch by Kyle Smith down there on the baseline. And he is having an exceptional sophomore season. It's an exceptional season for anybody. But as a sophomore, 15th and 4A at 17.6 points per game. 6.5 rebounds per game. That is number one in the Iowa Lions Conference North. And, uh, oh, by the way, 39 three-pointers on the season. That's number one in 4A and top five in the state of Iowa overall. Travel, Ames, turnover, Bobcat basketball, 605, opening quarter, 2-2 two, two apiece. Yeah, there's one word for Kyle Smith this year, and it's special. He's just been electric. 
Phenomenal to see how many made, made threes. Eight against Des Moines East in his last game. Here he is, right wing, opens up. A three off the right side of the iron. I asked him the other day, you keep that shot hot over the break? And he's like, yep. Yeah. Stayed in the gym, so you know he's into it. That is for sure. A runner in the paint, no good by Jack Winter. And the Bobcats come away with the basketball. Five and a half minutes to go. Giannetto dribbles to left wing, handoff to the point guard and Treshawn Brooks. Going to go play football in Graceland. The only chance I have to play at Graceland is if I go down to Memphis and buy a ticket. <laughs> is it Graceland? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was Grandview. Sorry. Might have been Grandview in Des Moines. Yes. Grandview. I think yes. it was Grandview, actually. Three on the left wing. It's good. And that'll be the first three made for Jamison Poe's season. 37% from long range. And it's 5-2. To answer, Kyle Smith just rims out. No good. Rebound. Marich Dow hauls it in. You can't miss him at 6-7. A sophomore. Big time inside presence. You know, Lucas Luth. They've got a Manny Luth on this year's team, but yep. Lucas Luth last year was that 6'7 senior guy that really, I think, helped get them as we see a foul in the Bobcats here with the clock will stop. But, you know, that was one thing about last year, that just so lanky. And Luth was not an exceptional scorer, but he was an exceptional defender, and he could really shut teams down. And I think that's the main reason they got themselves to the Wells Fargo Arena in postseason play. He could guard one through five. He was a big reason he wasn't Mr. Iowa. He was a big dunk there by Dow. And Marich Dow who says, uh, don't forget about me. I've yeah. got some athleticism as well. And Dow puts it in for two. And it's now 7-2, a 7-0 run for Ames after the Bobcats started out the game with an opening bucket by Rahelio Serin. And they're switching everything on a screen. So where teams have chased Smith off the screen and been trailing, Ames switches it all. So they're not trailing on any screens. Dow bumps the point guard for the Bombcats, Sean Brooks, and the ball last touch by Ames. Kyle Smith will inbound here. Baseline left side, 350 and counting in the opening quarter of play. Bobcats down, 7-2. And a pass off of a screen. It was Giannetto cutting to the far side, and Poe cut it off. And that's right there is that switch off of the pick as Poe switched with Voss and was able to knock it out of the passing lane there. Kyle Smith gets the inbounds pass. Shot clock ends, and that one's going to be into the stands. Some fans not quite paying attention. And uh, almost... Caught a Spalding right to the forehead, but uh, lucky he didn't get that. 7-2 turnover on the Bobcats as Poe takes a second to tie his shoe. Very good running back. Yes. You know, especially on the basketball floor, you realize that uh, he is, uh, well, maybe not all of 5'9", Dylan. 5'9 I I, I, is gracious. I yeah, feel like that's incredibly gracious. <laughs> <laughs> but he packs a punch, that is for sure. Now a travel turnover will thomas gives it back to the bobcats with 326 in the opening quarter with the cats trailing 72 needing a bucket right here on this possession yeah it really feels like this is something where the bobcats kyle smith has had a couple good looks but nothing fall is to see if they can get this thing into the lane and make decisions outside of that rahelio Sarin, left wing drives and a hand check is going to be called on marich dow That'll be his first foul, first team foul. So one apiece for each squad. Yeah, and the first foul of the night was on Carter Giannetto. There was no real indication they didn't put it on the scoreboard. And finally, I see we did get a confirmation it was on Giannetto. What are we going to say, Dylan? It's You can see just love the aggressiveness of Saren so far, taking it right at the shot blocker Dow. Yeah, step back from the free throw line just behind it. No good by Treshawn Brooks from straight on. And it's still 7-2, our score inside the roundhouse of the Highway 30 rivalry. He's Dylan Dose. I'm Brandon Lewis. Thanks for joining us tonight along with our KFJB-TV crew. Poe from straight on at three is no good. Rims out left side. Rahelio Sarin 
Gathers it in, hands off to Carter Giannetto, and we have a timeout on the floor taken by head coach Mike Apple. We'll take it with them, 241 first quarter inside the roundhouse on KFJB TV. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress Downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. My name's Carter Gianetto, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 7 2, Bobcats down, 241 opening quarter. Scoreboard update on Bronte by Central State Bank, Dylan. All of these at the end of one Dowling 15, Joaquin Northwest 13, West Marshall 10, Sadell 13, East Marshall 14, Appleton and Parkersburg 16. Treshawn Brooks, high points to basketball, right wing, gives to Carter Giannetto, settles for a three. It's in and out, no good. Thomas with the rebound for Ames. He'll bring it up far side, up the left wing. They settle things down, get it back to Poe, top of the key, crossover against Treshawn Brooks. Leans in, left side, good move for Jamison Poe. He has five, and it's now a 9-0 run for Ames. We've liked him since he was a freshman. I, I wouldn't say like. That's a strong word, Dylan. We've... L- We've, appreci- we've appreciated his <laughs> what he does. We, yeah, we appreciate him. That's for sure. We appreciate his his uh, abilities. Kyle Smith, we appreciate his abilities a whole lot. He's looking for his first bucket of the night. Closely guarded by Poe. Gives it to Giannetto. Pull up left high post. Tries to use a glass. Can't get it to go. Thomas clear out to Poe. And Van Stowns could not write up a better script of what shots he wanted the Bobcats to take. Oh, boy. Left hand leans in from the right block. It's good for Thomas for two. His second bucket, he has four, 11-2. Yeah, Bobcats have had nothing in transition. Ames has been a bit tougher, and right now just allowing Ames' toughness is just pressuring the ball around the perimeter, causing some really poor shots by the Bobcats. This is not a team that wants to settle in like they currently are, right? I mean, they, exactly. they don't settle into the front court too often. Off the glass, off the left side of the iron, hits a couple times, three is no good for Corey Smith. And Thomas now works it from the left wing to the left block, and he lays it up with the right hand on the left side, showing his ability to score with whichever hand, Dylan, as we're under a minute, 13-2. to two. Kyle Smith has got to be a lot more balanced on, on closing out there. He just went right past him. Boy, a drive and getting stalled as three guys trapped. Now Giannetto has his pocket picked by Poe, and a foul is going to be called. Poe will be subbed out for on the dead ball. The foul was on the floor, and that's foul number two on the Ames Little Cyclones. Number one on the number Poe. As we see Giannetto with that last one as the ball was taken away from him. And you see this quite a bit from Coach Apple in these tougher games. His bench gets really short. Corey Smith inbounds. He is going to be checked from behind. Cam Strawhacker is checked in. The 5'11 senior will pick up the foul. as That'll be number three here in the opening quarter with 34 seconds to go. Bobcats desperately need a bucket. A screen for Kyle Smith. Can't find him open. They give it to Giannetto now. Shot clock is off. 30 seconds in the opening quarter left here. Treshawn, a stutter step, and then worked himself in. Inside, straight on. Manny Luth is going to pick up a foul as he was guarding on Treshawn. It is a shooting foul, so that will send Treshawn Brooks to line for a free throw. So Luth... With the fourth foul on the Ames Little Cyclones here in this opening half. As Treshawn Brooks heads to the free throw line. So far, a 67% free throw shooter on the young season. Misses the first, and we're still at 13-2. Love Trey's aggressiveness to get it into the lane. Bobcats have gotten it into the lane twice. First one was Saren's bucket. And then... Ah. Brooks misses both free throws. Not the way you want to start the night tonight. Scoring is dried up and free throws. No good. 0 for 2. And Ames will play for the last shot, leading by 11. Six seconds. Thomas with it. Underhand flip. 
Now up high, they're gonna get trapped. Back to Thomas with one second, and boom, a three. Near side corner, you gotta be kidding me. 16-2 our score as we head to the second quarter. Cyclones all over the Cats inside the roundhouse. Ready to take the next step in your education? Look no further. Marshalltown Community College is your ticket to endless opportunities. Our dedicated faculty and diverse programs are your pathway to success. Whether you're pursuing a career in healthcare, industry, or earning your AA degree, MCC offers the flexibility you need. We provide convenient online classes and locations in Marshalltown. Now picture yourself thriving at MCC. Your journey begins now. Discover more at MarshalltownCommunityCollege.com. Hey, Bobcat Nation. It's Jacob Hayes. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Little Cyclones are 4-2, and 3-0 and in the Iowa Lions Conference. Your Bobcats also 3-0 and in conference play, so somebody going to be disappointed. And so far, it's looking like the Bobcats 16-2 to as we head to the second quarter. Bobcats just really struggled against this defense of Ames. The Ames. Ames brings intensity every single time we play them. They play at 100%. There are back cuts available. You can work against their aggressiveness, but right now the aggressiveness of Ames is just causing the Bobcats just to be just doe-eyed. And then Will Thomas averaging four and a half points a game had nine there making in the look first like quarter. A, yeah, making him look like a superstar early on here. 16-2 our score. Bobcats with a basketball in the Highway 30 rivalry to start up the second quarter. Kyle Smith with the basketball. Lost it. Now they get it down to Corey Smith. Jumper. Right block is good for two. You can see in the last two possessions without Dow in there, Bobcats are much more aggressive taking it to the basket. Manny Luth, top of the key, swings it over. Cam Strawhacker, the senior, changes places. He gets it back from Will Thomas. Now they drop it inside with the dribble out to the right wing. Now back to the top of the key. Now kick out, wide open, long three. Bobcats struggle to get the rebound. Can't, Strawhacker put back, misses. Now another put back, he gets a toe this time. Abram Voss actually the man down low. Thought that was Strawhacker, but Voss with his first bucket of the night for two. Yeah, Voss was one on three on the glass, was able to get a couple cracks at it. Bucket's down by 14, 18, four is our score. Kyle Smith down to the left block, steps back, has the ball batted away, gathers it back in up to Giannetto. He'll drive down the right side of the paint, kick out to Treshawn, takes a three, and that went off. But Corey Smith doing the dirty work, gets the uh, rebound on the left block, put back, no good. And Strawhacker will come away with a basketball. Yeah, this game right now is being played in a phone booth. I'd love to see the Bobcats. Ames doesn't turn the ball over, so there's no transition. But to have some pace, some movement. That's one thing. There's not an exceptional score on this team. No. But they don't turn the ball over. Under seven turnovers a game. And they average uh, almost 12 assists a game. So... You know, it's that two-to-one ratio you like. Which yeah. the Bobcats in their last four games have had that two-to-one ratio in assists to turnovers. But, again, that is drying up here tonight against a very stingy defensive team as somebody lost their popcorn in the front row on the far side as we have a quick timeout. Let's get a scoreboard update. All brought to you by Central Stank Bank. As we look at the scoreboard again, all the things out yeah. there. Oh, yeah, tuck, tuck that popcorn underneath the stands. There we go. <laughs> And we still have those uh, East Marshall <laughs> trailing by Bucket Dappling to Parkersburg. West Marshall down three to Saydell. Dowling up two on Waukee Northwest. Those are all in the second quarter. 18-4, a score inside the roundhouse. Tomcats um, trailing. Kyle Smith bumped out high, gives it over to Giannetto right wing. He's looking, but nothing really there. And now drives to the left, or excuse me, the right block, and what a beautiful move. Layup is good for Giannetto and the senior with a takeover move, a much-needed basket. And what you want to see on some of those screens with Ames switching every screen, you'd love to see some dive cuts by the Bobcats. And now Kyle Smith will have a touch here on Manny Luth, and that will send him to the free-throw line. Shots no good. It is a shooting foul. First foul of the night on Kyle Smith. So the clock stopped at 5.27 in the opening quarter, or uh, opening half. 
And Manny Luth heads to the free throw line at 50%. Throw shooter first foul in and out, no good. And just like Lucas, a wiry frame. Yeah. I feel like his inseam is about 40 inches. He's, <laughs> he doesn't look all that tall from the waist up, but he looks like a giant. Those are the longest things in central Iowa. They, they are for sure. Now a travel's going to be called on Treshawn Brooks. A turnover on the Bobcats, 18-6 with 5.15 to go before halftime. The ball back to the Ames Little Cyclones. They were gonna, they're gonna call that on Rogelio Saren, actually. Okay. Luth on the right wing gives it to Poe, top of the key here, into the front court. Ames in their black tops and wow. bottoms, and Poe took too many steps before passing it out to the right wing. So back to the Bobcats, a rare turnover on the Ames Little Cyclones. Bobcat defense has been really good here in the second quarter. The offense just, there is not a whole lot there. Treshawn, the paint opens up, but a block shot by Marich Dow. And it is a shooting foul. They say a little contact there on the way up. So Treshawn Brooks will head to the free throw line for two. But Marich Dow, uh, 23 blocks this season, number one for a. He's averaging nearly four blocks a game. He's going to be a problem for the the next two and a half years and he may be a he hasn't been a huge problem here tonight that's his second foul he's gonna go and sit and Ames gets a lot smaller with Dow on the bench first free throw good right there for Treshawn Brooks he is just one of three on the night so far second free throw to come clock stopped at 451 before halftime the second one is no good, but you don't lose a lot of height because Manny Luth just gathered in that rebound and gathered that one in. His jumping ability good as well. Here's Poe, top of the key, guarded by Treshawn Brooks. Kicks over left wing now to Thomas and off at the top of the key over to Luth. Good ball movement right here by the Ames Little Cyclones. Thomas almost loot, lost it. Nobody really stepped out there to guard closely. Now a three, left wing is poured in by Jack Winter. 15.8 points per game, 27th in 4A, and he has another bucket right there. That's his first of the game. Three, just, though. Just a little weave play on the top. Finally, winner finds himself wide open. Crossover, jumper at the free throw line, goes in and out. Kyle Smith went for the rebound, couldn't get it. Ames throws it right back to Corey Smith, who will go inside the paint. Now he'll travel with it. Far side official says as he was trying to turn around it and get it to his brother, Kyle Smith. Turnover, Cats, down by two touchdowns. Yeah, it really is. It feels like Ames intensity, even when the Bobcats have numbers, they're worked up. They're, they're not thinking clearly, and there Corey Smith just takes one step too many. Luth, right wing, dribbles to the free throw line, guarded by Rahelio Sarin. As they kick it back to Thomas, he drives in. Foul on the floor before that bucket. So a foul on the floor of the Bobcats here in the second quarter. And the foul will come in on the Bobcats. Kyle Smith, that'll be his second of the night. And he will yeah, check out of the game. I thought that would be the case as Jacob Thiessen will check in. And you're seeing tonight right now the, the biggest gap right now in number 10's game is just on ball defense. Thomas kind of put him in a blender there and got to the rack. Shot by Ames missed and they say it is out of bounds on the baseline as Rahelio Sarin was going for the rebound but apparently out of bounds on the Bobcats and so that will be back to Ames for three and a half minutes to go before halftime. Coming up at halftime we'll talk to Brian Murphy head coach for the Marshalltown girls basketball team. Officials take a timeout and back to the pep band. Not sure what that was all about. Brett Upton, band director, was sitting right there. He goes back to work. Winter, left-handed floater, shot in the paint is good. It's 23-7, and this one getting out of hand early. 
And Winter's 6'3", but th- he has a huge wingspan. And on that right-handed dribble, knowing that the lefty is always going to come back left, and got a good look over Giannetto. Giannetto pulls up right side. Giannetto pulls up right side. It is no good. And back in transition is Ames. Luth. They beat the Bobcats. Good for two. Bobcats getting absolutely terrible opportunities on the offensive end. Some one-on-one, all-contested jumpers. Ames goes down. Everything's in the paint. 25-7 to is our score. Two and a half minutes to go before halftime. A pie to Rahelio Sierra and hands off to Treshawn Brooks. Brooks down the right side, kicks out. Almost looked like Corey Smith was going to have a wide open look. Rahelio Sarin has a wide open look and splash from the near side. The three is good for Rahelio Sarin. Five in the game and it's 25 to 10. Thank goodness the senior came to play. 24 is the one that's matched Ames energy here tonight. Winter to answer and it's off the front of the iron as Treshawn Brooks skies the ladder to grab in that rebound. He kicks out. Three for Thiessen, and boom, that one is good to answer as well, and finally the Cats coming alive here in the second quarter. Vance Downs doesn't like it, but we do. 25-13, 1.48 to go before halftime on KFJB TV. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshall. This is Jacob Thiessen. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Right on cue, Jacob Thiessen bringing us back inside the roundhouse. Cats trailing 25-13. But the Bobcats using a little bit of a run here, Dylan, to get themselves back into this one. Just back-to-back huge threes by a little more unheralded seniors. Saren knocks in a three. Jacob Thiessen. Luth, top of the key with a basketball, hands off to Poe. That's we'll have to stiffen up defensively, though, to get back into this one. Thomas drives down to the baseline, right side, shut down, back to Poe, top of the key. He'll kick out far side corner. Rahelio Sarin picks up the man, jumper high, left high post by Foss. It is no good, and the Bobcats come up with a nice defensive possession as we approach the one-minute mark. Bobcats trailing by 12. Corey Smith, right wing, up to Giannetto. Top of the key, he passes Rahelio Sarin near side corner, sets a screen. Sarin uses it, drives into the paint, kicks it back out to the top of the key. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Treshawn, Jukin, jiving, and ripped away. Poe forces a jump ball, and the Bobcats will lose possession as it's back to the Ames Little Cyclones with 53 seconds to go before halftime. Again, we have not seen Treshawn do that a whole lot this year, right? A lot of just dribbling to nowhere. He usually has a purpose, but this defense tonight has kind of gotten under his skin just a little bit. There is very little ball movement, a lot of one-on-one, and and Jamison Poe was just licking his lips. He knew he was going to have to spin back to him and was right there. Poe knifes in from the left wing, and he hits the deck hard, and a foul is going to come in on the Bobcats. As that one will be issued against Corey Smith, his first foul of the night, and that will send Jamison Poe to the line for two. 25 13 our score. As Poe heads to the line, he is a 71% free throw shooter on the season. And the first free throw, I think he thought he was going to miss that as it went off the right side and then kind of rolled in. But it's good for Poe as he now has six points on the night. It's only the second trip to the free throw line tonight for Ames. And that second one is good. So Poe makes both and extends the lead 27-13. Bob can't spring it over the midcourt logo. Hand off Giannetto, left wing from Brooks. And now a charge, an illegal screen. 
It's going to be set by Carter Giannetto. And a turnover on the Bombcats. Well, the Bombcats um, on their way to committing 15 or more turnovers here tonight, Dylan. That's something they have not done in the last five games, but yeah. unfortunately Ames has forced a lot of that. They have. It's just we talk about the first the, all about toughness, the intensity. Ames comes at you 110%, and the Bobcats got punched in the mouth, and they feel timid. Two teams both at 3-0 and in the Iowa Lions Conference north side of things. But Ames dominating this first half as Poe goes in, and a ringer is good, and that's how we will end the first half of action. 29-13. Bobcats getting steamrolled early on by the Ames Little Cyclones inside the roundhouse right here on KFJB TV. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. Ribeyes and sirloins, aged, hand-cut, and served with your choice of two of Legends' legendary sides and a dinner roll. If you are a prime rib fan, Legends has prime rib every Friday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. With three sides to choose from, it's chef-seasoned and slow-cooked to tender, juicy perfection. Try Legends Prime Rib, and you'll know why it's Marshalltown's favorite. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. Since 1967, Jensen Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that has passed down from every previous generation. Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family for generations. We want to be there for your first car. We want to be there for your family SUV. And we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. There's a city within a city not far from here. This city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. This city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Don't let concerns about the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. KFJV TV presents the Bobcat Halftime Report. Halftime inside the roundhouse in the Highway 30 rivalry, dominated by the Ames, the Little Cyclones in the first half, 29 to 13. Bobcats had just two points at the end of the first quarter. First half uh, scoring leader Rahelio Serra in a three and a two. He has five at the break, and Jacob Thiessen with three. Meanwhile, Ames Little Cyclones, Will Thomas having a career night just about, Dylan. Nine yeah. points in that first half, seven for Jamison Poe, and five for Jack Winter. But it, it's just, again, a, another rough first half for the Bobcats against Ames, who you know, challenges a lot of teams. Yeah, it is, uh, the defensive issue has started with a three-letter last name, but it's not the 6'7 person in the middle. It's Jamison Poe has been incredible on the perimeter, just locking down the leading scorer at 17.6 points per game in the sophomore Kyle Smith has gotten up two shots, no real clean looks, picked up a couple fouls, but he and the rest of Ames' defense has just pretzeled the Marshalltown offense. Well, we'll see if they can find some cinnamon and sugar for that pretzel in the second half. I like it. That would be a sweet. I like it. I'm, I'm done with the puns we're over we're moving on <laughs> brian murphy head coach for the girls basketball team they lost earlier tonight to ames 49 26 dylan will chat with him when we come back this is halftime report from inside the roundhouse on kfjb tv 
The votes have been tallied and the people have spoken. Central Iowa's home comfort specialist, Honest Heating and Cooling, is honored to have been voted best of the best in HVAC by you and the Times Republican. As a thanks, Honest is offering a 10% off sale, 10% off diagnostics, 10 off tune-ups, 10 off ductwork renovation, 10% off full system upgrades. Offer valid through September. So thanks for voting for Honest Heating and Cooling, where you'll find Amana, America's brand for comfort. Honest. It's Adventure On for Marshalltown Scouting. Adventures like backpacking, zip lining, rock climbing, canoeing, swimming, and more. Survival skills for a scout's greatest adventure, life. Scouts give back to the community. Marshalltown Scouts have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community in our 70-plus year history. Scout leaders are highly trained in screen. Parents are a huge part of scouting, too. Scouting provides unique opportunities available nowhere else. To learn more about scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure On! The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by Jensen Ford, with you every mile along the way. Legends American Grill, Marshalltown Steakhouse. Lennox Employees Credit Union, LennoxECU.com. Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown, more than ever. Marshalltown Community College, a step in the right direction. Welcome back into the post-game coaches interview sponsored by Laurel Diesel Services. I'm here with Coach Brian Murphy. 49-26 loss. We knew the measuring stick was Ames. How do you think? Big loss in, in the second half. But what did you talk to the girls about after the game? Uh, I mean, the thing we focused on in the locker room after the game is if we can bottle that second quarter where we, we handled the press, we outscored them 14-12 to 12 in that second quarter, I mean, that's the team we need to be consistently, and that's yeah. the hardest thing for a young team to understand is, you know, being good means being consistent, right, and do the same thing that works and recognizing it in advance. So, you know, it's something we're going to keep working on, but, you know, we feel like we are continuing to grow. We looked a lot better against the press than we did against Fort Dodge. Um, so now we understand that, you know, we got to play that the next game's coming up. And real quickly, 14 points from your sophomore guard, Kinsley Bowie. What can you say about her? Uh, the great thing about someone like Kinsley, when she's hot, she doesn't miss. And, I mean, we want her, you know, we want her shooting uh, every time she's open. And what, tonight was one of those nights, even if she wasn't open, you know, they're dropping for her. So she had a great game for us overall. Thank you very much, Coach. And that has been the postgame interview brought to you by Laurel Diesel Services. We'll be back with the adjustment for the second half. When Mike Overton moved to Laurel, Iowa, he had a vision to have a diesel repair shop that would support his growing family and passion for working on diesel engines. Being part of the East Marshall community means ensuring that farmers, truck drivers, and businesses run smoothly. With a large building and state-of-the-art equipment, Laurel Diesel Services is always up for a challenge. When your farm trucks, semis, or other diesel equipment requires maintenance or the occasional repair, take it to Laurel Diesel Services. You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. Back inside the roundhouse as the Bobcats trailing up on the Marshalltown High V scoreboard 29-13 to at the break. Let's get a Central State Bank scoreboard update, Dylan. The battle of the directions in Des Moines. Des Moines North 48, Des Moines East 17. Dubuque Senior, the great squad out of Dubuque, leads Cedar Rapids Jefferson 59-36 in the third quarter. I'll be down in Cedar Rapids Monday night Correct, for yeah. that game. 
Fort Dodge 30, Mason City 25 at half. Ankeny down to Urbandale, 32-27 in the third. West Marsh trails Adel, 39-33. And at halftime, Applington Parkersburg 32, East Marshall 29. Bobcats coming out of locker room trailing 29-13. What's your key to the second half, Dylan? So it really comes down to, in the half court, we struggle to score. But one thing we can do when they're switching all of the picks, I'd love to see instead of trying to go around that switch, just drop a dive cut, look for the back door. I think there's some layups there. And then try to get this thing out in transition. Take the ball and go. Move the basketball. Yeah. Get threes in transition. Second half is coming up next right here on your home for the Cats. News Talk 1230 KFJB AM 93.9 FM and KFJB TV. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. Bobcats tonight in those blue uniforms praying for Perry. And I heard your comments earlier tonight. Well said, Dylan. It's mentoring month, though. I will mention that. And it is. It's I always just, mentoring month. I feel that this is a good time to remind you that when you see things of this nature, you don't just roll over it, right? Get involved. Be a yeah. mentor to somebody. This is someone who didn't obviously lacked someone yeah. of inspiration in their life. Yeah. And direction and uh, you know be a coach be something big brothers big sisters is a great place um, as they say it takes a little to be a, it takes little to be a big it just really yeah. does hanging out investing in young people and Rogelio Saren talking about investing in teammates he has been aggressive all night long yeah. anyway final thought was is that you know EMS is a need. I mean, get involved. That's yeah. that's why we have so many problems nowadays is because nobody's involved. Everybody wants to point out the flaws, but nobody wants to do anything about it. So, anyway, uh, hopefully that can inspire you, and hopefully the Bobcats inspired in the second half by Rahelio Sarid, who misses the free throw. Got the first one, though. Got six points on the night to lead the Bobcats. Seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. And Giannetto with a nice job. Poked that one away from Winter as Winter is the last to touch it on his way on the baseline. And the Bobcats will be with the basketball back in their possession with seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. They need another 27-point third quarter like they had at Des Moines East to end out the first half of the season. Uh, you know, that was a quarter where Kyle Smith hit a bunch of threes. Kyle Smith, by the way, we mentioned not a single point in that first half. Trayshawn has it poked away. Here's Winter on a fast break. No numbers. He goes one-on-one -on -one with Rahelio. Slaps at it, misses. And Winter with an easy layup for two. He has seven on the night. Saren's got to meet him further up on the lane there. But on the offensive side, Trey's over dribbling. And Ames is just going to bring a second defender. Yep. And a carry right there for Trayshawn Brooks. Turnover. I don't know how many, the, how many turnovers the Bobcats have tonight, but it's uh, approaching 15 and just not a recipe for success when you take on the little Cyclones of Ames. No, they, the Bobcats have done absolutely everything Ames wants them to do. Settle for one-on-one, -on -one, settle for 18-foot jumpers, and it's just how they ride it up. Mm. Kyle, or Corey Smith is going to pick up a hand check, and he will, as that will be the first foul on the Bobcats here in the second half of action. Treshawn Brooks actually the one to check out after uh, Corey Smith picked up the foul on the Bobcats. And Treshawn Brooks heading to the bench. The trainer, Avery, got up to look at him, yeah. so I don't know if he, he needs was ankle. a little bit. Yeah, it looked like they were going to tape his ankle. 
Poe, top of the key, drives in against Rogelio Serra, and that's a good up and under move. Got Rogelio off of his feet and then went up. Just a really solid play by a guy who you thought he would be graduating later this year, but no. <laughs> just a junior. He's just a junior, that's for sure. 33-14, Cats down big at home. Yeah, and you look at Poe, it's, and he's been able to accomplish it along with Thomas is that opposite hand little scoop shot has been so difficult to defend on the drive. Giannetto floater in the paint is good for two. He has four on the night. Upcats will have to piece together a lot more of those to get back into this one down 33-16. Looking at Thomas, just little handoff dribbles. They've run this little weave on the top side over and over. Winter hands off. Thomas backside to Luth. He uses a glass for two and Luth with four in the game. And this is why it's so important that Ames switches those picks with the Bobcats not switching. They're trailing on everything. And you see, because of that, there's an easy wide open dump off to Lee. Jumper right wing, Giannetto's three is no good. It skims off the iron. Out to Winter, comes up the near side in front of the scorer's table, up to the left wing, hands off to Poe. Poe cut off by a couple of Bobcats. Now a handoff to Voss. Voss bounces it back to Thomas, and they'll reset the offense with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Luth, top of the key, hands up. Down the right side of the paint. Floater, up, out of control, no good. Giannetto rebound. As we approach four and a half minutes inside the roundhouse, third quarter, Kyle Smith trying to connect for his first three of the night, couldn't get it to go. Corey Smith saves it from going out of bounds. Up to Rahelio Serra, now to a wide open Giannetto. Three, splash right there, a much needed three. Five points in the second half for Carter Giannetto. Seven on the night, and the Bobcats down 35-19. A quick timeout by Coach Apple and the Bobcats. We'll take it with them. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB-TV. The equity in your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate debt, fund a student loan, or pay for a wedding. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. Four twenty-seven to go in the third quarter as the Bobcats in a huddle right there. As nice play by Corey Smith to save the ball from going out of bounds. And then Giannetto hit the three as we headed to this timeout of the floor. What do you think is the big main reason for that timeout right there? I think it's you get a big bucket. Now he wants to, I'm anticipating maybe extending that defense. Some change in the defensive philosophy potentially. Because this is where Coach Apple's like, it's now or never. We need a little change in the offensive philosophy, too. <laughs> they are going to extend the defense here. More full court pressure being shown. Luth inbounds. You see Thomas and the Bobcats fall back into the Ames front court. Try to go up top to Winter. Little give and go play, trying to catch the Bobcats off guard, but Voss just throws that one out of bounds. And so the Bobcats get it back 35 19. I don't know what happens, but, you know, sometimes, I mean, I get that, you know, the defense aims doing a good job of cutting off some of those passing lanes and putting pressure, but I just feel like there's still ways around to get good ball movement, which we have not really seen here tonight. Corey Smith with a great play and a great save as Corey Smith missed the shot. Kyle Smith. Got the pass out to Rahelio Sarin, who charges, and Rahelio will pick up a foul. That's his first of the night, and it's 35-19 back to Ames. What happens sometimes in pressure and intensity is your eyes get very small. You're not seeing the whole court. You're seeing the you're seeing the conflict in front of you, so you're not seeing the open things. It's not that pressure and intensity doesn't have holes. There's backside and cuts where the Bobcats can get buckets, but when that pressure comes, their eyes are just getting too small and not seeing the whole court. You know, you're wise beyond your years. 
Uh, it's, I'm almost to the age where you can't say beyond my years. <laughs> That's true. What's the cutoff? 45? <laughs> I th- I'm, it's going to move every year I get older. <laughs> Winter misses the layup. It's no good. Giannetto with the ball in transition goes in. He's fouled on his way in. Foul occurred on the floor. One of the things we talked, Giannetto started really poorly this year. So much was on his shoulders with Trey out. But with Trey back in, he's back in his role. Last two games, averaging 14 and a half points a game. Tonight, he's been really good. Baseline left side, Giannetto inbounds. Bobcats trailing 35-19. Kyle Smith trying to connect to his first three of the night. Can't get that one. The quick catch and shoot off the inbounds pass from Giannetto. Aims into the front court off the rebound. Thomas controlling the basketball. As a hold's going to be called down low as Poe was trying to cut off a screen and he was being held. I think that's on, Cor- was it Corey Smith? It, they're going to call it on. There is no 22. Okay, a one, so it's, it's on Giannetto. Giannetto and Corey Smith were in the same area. So I saw the one, but it is on Giannetto, his second of the night. Three minutes to go, third quarter. Bobcats down 35-19. Good to see that uh, Treshawn Brooks is back at the game for the Bobcats. Poe drives in left wing or left block and has it blocked in its last off of Poe. Kind of shakes his head. He wasn't happy with the call or the drive result. The Bobcats were there to block his shot. Well, one thing I know track and field people know this, but Corey Smith is incredibly athletic. He's He's about had the most success keeping the Ames guards in front of him. What are you saying? He, he's out for the high jump this year in track or what? You know he's a fast kid. He's an athletic mm-hmm. kid. But I think sometimes Kyle scores all the points, but Curry's a legit athlete. And boom, a big three needed by Trayshawn Brooks. That's his first field goal of the night. He has four. Been a tough night shoot for him. He's just one of four at the free throw line. Yeah, pressing a little bit in that half-court offense, but finally got a shot to go down. Bobcats forced a turnover. They were trying to go inside to Winter as Giannetto poked it away. Corey it, Smith came away with it. Tried to go to Winter in the post twice in the third quarter. Both resulted in turnovers. Now Kyle Smith has his pocket picked by Voss. Winter will have his pocket picked by Corey Smith, and a foul is going to be called on Corey. He thought he had the turnover and was going to get a foul on Winter, but officials saw it the other way around. I thought they were going to call him for the over and back because he established position in the in the fo- in the front court and went backwards, but they ended up calling him on a foul. So that's number two on the night for Corey Smith. Third team foul, 140 to go, third quarter. Up the Marshalltown Hivey scoreboard, Bobcats trailing 35-22. Winter off a screen. Giannetto, Giannetto guarding at the top of the key. Gets it over to Poe. He goes down to the right block. His floater's no good. Poe is maybe wanting a foul right there. No call. Giannetto gets the ball in transition into the front court. Opens up three. It's going to be strong off the back of the iron. No good. Winter just flies in there from the left wing and hauls away the rebound. He'll t- attack in transition. Spin move, and Kyle Smith's going to pick up a foul. I think they're going to call it on Jacob Thiessen on the block attempt. It is correct for my call. It is on Kyle Smith, his third of the night. I was trying to speak it into existence because Jacob doesn't have one. You didn't have enough conviction. I didn't. Winter's free throw is up and good. He's a 77% free throw shooter. You know, you you talk about can games be lost or won in that first quarter. Yeah. Bobcats have looked good, especially defensively here in the second and third quarters. It was that first quarter. Bobcats got down big. 16 to 2. And and it's a 15-point lead now. So yeah. Ames in that second and third quarter has a one-point advantage. Winter made the second one as well, correct? Yes. Four points in the second half. Kyle Smith off a screen. Catch and shoot three is no good. Luth out rebounds. And that's the thing is that Luth is 6'7", or excuse me, Luth is uh, 6'4". Marainch Dow is 6'7". And both of those guys just 
they can out-rebound easily. You yeah. know, Bobcats don't have a guy to, to be there to, to answer with that height as Abram Voss drives from the left wing, and he gets his first field goal of the second half. He has four on the night. 39-22. Cats have the last shot of the quarter as the shot clock and the game clock are nearly identical. Giannetto, top of the key. Over to Corey Smith, open for the three. Drives baseline. And a blocking foul is going to be called by Poe as Poe hits the deck. Corey Smith did not go up with the shot, I don't believe. Are they going to rule that shooting foul? Yeah, I think he was going up. The The foul happened low when he was just coming up. Yeah, that's why I didn't think the, the foul is going to be a shooting foul. But they do rule a shooting foul. So that means Corey Smith, the senior guard at 6-1. A 55% free throw line shooter at the uh, stripe for two. And the first one will rattle home. Corey Smith with three points on the night. He's another one that has benefited from Trey Brooks being back in his point guard role. Last couple games averaging 14 points a game. Hey, how about that? The Colorado women beat Arizona to make up for the, the men's 50-point loss last night. Buffs have a good women's team for sure. They do. Yeah. Second one both. is, yeah, Corey Smith with both made, uh, both made free throws. Four points for him tonight, so 39-24. Three seconds to go. Winter pulls up three is no good. And we head to the fourth quarter. The Bobcats trailing 39-24 on KFJB TV. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problem. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. Hi, this is Lamar, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Up on the Marshalltown Ivy scoreboard, Bobcats trail 39-24. Let's get a Central State Bank area scoreboard update here on KFJB TV. Dylan? We have a final, and it was a close one, but the West Marshall Trojans could not pull it off. Lose to the Tadale 50 to 48. Lincoln 43, Atumwa 41, end of three. North 57, Des Moines East 25 at the end of three. Nevada all over PCM 51 22. And then Dubuque Senior 62 against Monday's opponent, Cedar Rapids Jefferson has 41. 39-24, Ames will have the basketball for the final eight minutes here inside the roundhouse in the Highway 30 rivalry. He's Dylan Doze, I'm Brandon Lewis for Zach Tomish, our producer tonight, as well as our radio producer, Jeff Brooks, and on camera tonight, Joe Cornwell and the one and only Keith Stewart. We're inside the roundhouse, Bobcats trailing it as we start the fourth quarter, and Ames will turn it over promptly, trying to go down low. He was wide open, Marich Dow, but it's a turnover, and we didn't see Dow really in that third quarter he, whatsoever. He did not play in that third quarter. L Luth started. He only had two Kinda fouls. It wasn't yeah. like crazy. Yeah. You never know if these guys are nursing a little bit of an injury as a three is no good by T. Sid near side. Or if Downs is working with different rotations being up double digits. You that never is, quite know. That is true, too. Excellent point, Dylan. You are wise beyond your basketball years. That's right. Approaching seven minutes, fourth quarter. You know, this is one of those nights. Winter pulls up, and his jumper was no good. Dow got the rebound. His putback is no good. Bobcats come away with the basketball. We have not seen much transition points tonight, and that's that's where the Bobcats have done a lot of their dirty work is the turnaround yeah. jumper by Giannetto is no good. That's how they've gotten themselves back into games or we, extended leads. We talked about the three T's tonight. Toughness, Ames has been tougher. Transition, zero points in transition, and then threes. Kyle Smith himself hasn't hit any. Bobcats have hit three of them. But, yeah, it really is. Bobcats, yeah. this smaller offense needs to be able to move and get buckets before the defense sets up. That one was right on the line, but they rule it at three by Jack Winter, 
he was kind of yo-yo on that dribble, and he got a step right into the three. Do you own a yo-yo back in the day? I owned one, mm-hmm. couldn't do anything with him. I no could, cat's cradle, couldn't walk the dog. Oh, I could walk the dog, baby. I'll oh, tell yeah. you what I could do is get the get the string all twisted and knotted <laughs> so it didn't work. 42-24-620 for the fourth quarter on KFJB-TV. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today. Our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. Hey, Bobcat Nation, this is Kyle Smith. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 22 24, fourth quarter, 6.20 to go in this one. Inside the roundhouse is Bobcats trailing. As we take a look at head coach Mike Apple, he's he's faced Vance Downs probably more times than he'd like to in his career, player and coach. Yeah, it's, uh, of course, uh, coach was was a sophomore on the uh, was on the team. He wasn't a sophomore, but when Harrison Barnes and uh, Doug McDermott were sophomores, the last time they lost as as a Cyclone tandem. And then, but we have had a lot of heartbreakers, Dames, for sure. Yeah, that is for sure. Bombcats are just twenty. Uh, they're just five and twenty-three against Ames since two thousand six, and uh, twelve in a row between two thousand twelve and twenty twenty. Yeah, it's um, and so Bobcats, uh, you know, just have struggled last year, fifty to thirty-eight and forty-three thirty-eight losses. It's never been one of those things, especially over the past couple of years under Apple's leadership. It's never been really a blowout usually, but it's just one of those things where, you know, like tonight, you get behind the eight ball and it's just really tough to catch up. Is no gun on the shot there for the Bobcats? The Bobcats against Ames are forced to play in the half court and they're not good enough executing or efficient enough executing in the half court to beat Ames. It's really as simple as that. 42-24. Boss, left wing, guarded by Treshawn Brooks. Now to winter, top of the key, three is off the right side, but Dow with a putback, it's good. And it's a 20-point game just like that. Yeah, you see quickly as the sophomore Kyle Smith is having what I would call a gravity game. Everything's coming back to earth. Hasn't been able to knock down a three yet. But and there, he, there goes. he goes. Yeah, right on cue. Gets his first one of the night. And that's number 40 of the season for the sophomore as he leads Class 4A coming into tonight's action. You know what a shooter says, just let me see one go in, and then I think they can all go in promise you number 10 has not lost any confidence. No, that's for sure. Thomas not losing any confidence himself. 11 points in the game now for him. 46-27. Four and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And a lot of that is because Saren has to stay on Dow because Dow easy lob dunk there and it gives Thomas a wide open path to the lane for two. Kyle Smith was looking to shoot off the screen, but lost the basketball now on the left wing. Let's give it away. Now to Rahelio Sarin gets a screen, feeds it back, but it's picked up by Poe, and he speeds ahead. Layup is up and misses it, and Kyle Smith is going to hit the deck as well as Poe as a foul from behind. And Kyle Smith is still on the deck. He'll be helped up by his brother, Corey Smith. And that will send Poe to the line for two free throws. With 4.03 stopped on the Marshalltown Hy-Vee school board. And here's the big thing where Ames is different than any other team in our conference. I'll even include the other side with Roosevelt and them. Is you cannot make an offensive mistake or anything that even borders on a lazy pass. Because Ames is always tenacious, always going to get those and maximize the mistakes that you make. Luth is going to check in as Win- or excuse me, Thomas will check out for Ames. One thing I do like about Ames, there's not a whole lot, but I do like their court. 
It is a nice new court. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Harrison to see if uh, he wanted to uh, build me a court at my house. He said no. So I, said, so I asked him to give my number to Keegan, so we'll see. Waiting for that second contract. Jamison Poe knocks down the first but misses the second free throw. Timeout of the floor. It's a 20-point game inside the roundhouse. 3.55 to go fourth quarter on KFJB TV. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress Downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. My name is Rogelio Seren, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KGV TV. Hope to have you along next Thursday night as Bobcat Live Winter Edition returns as we'll be joined by Ryan Murphy, girls basketball coach. We'll also talk with head coach Michael Apple, and we'll talk Bobcat Athletics. Hope to see out there, Rosie's at Wayward Social Live from 6 to 7 here on KFJB TV. Out of the timeout, Carter Giannetto hits a jumper at the free throw line. And it's an 18-point game inside the roundhouse. Bobcats with three and a half minutes to go inside the roundhouse on the Highway 30 rivalry tonight. And we don't want to talk too glowingly about Ames, but out of our four <laughs> years of doing these things together, no matter what player is on this team, Vance Down, this is a system team. Yes, they have talent. Yes, they've had Mr. Basketball. They have people playing in college all over the place. But this system is locked and loaded, and they play with great it's, effort always. It's it, I don't really believe in next man up because I, I don't think that the next man is always as talented. <laughs> no. Like, you know what I mean? But this is truly like the definition of next man up basketball yeah. because they, they plug and play, and yeah. it doesn't really matter. You're right. I mean, especially – and that's the thing that I've always thought is that basketball is the one yeah. sport where for sure, in any sport mostly, the defense can travel. Yeah. Every night. It doesn't matter. So, I mean, the, the the ball might not go in the hoop like it is for Bobcats, but, boy, I tell you what, Ames will bring their defense, and sometimes yep. that defense turns into offense. Yeah, and it's just – and you look at all the talent that they have had. Uh, Tamin Lipsy is averaging 16 points a game in the Big 12, one of the best basketball conferences in the nation. And he's really taking a step forward this year yes. at the guard. He's been fantastic. Uh, then you look at uh, player at Indian Hills. You've got – uh, Kirkwood, they've got they've yeah, got Luth, guys playing Luth, everywhere. Luth is down there. At yeah, and then uh, the forward, Indian Hills. The, the forward that transferred from Waterloo down to Ames. Oh, he was uh, there too. Yeah, he's yeah. at Indian Hills. Uh, can't think of his name right now. But yeah, you're right. There's been a whole host of guys that have that are played on the high level basketball. Oh, yeah. Yep. Two minutes to go inside the roundhouse. Poe jump a right block. Right high post is no good. And Giannetto got the rebound, and Dow fouled from behind. And the thing is, is that, you know, you bring in uh, Marich Dow, the sophomore, at 6 7, and just his defensive ability to block the shot at, at, at such a young age, a sophomore, it's just impressive to see how even the young guys step up and make plays. You know, we remember seeing Poe as a freshman and thinking, this guy is just something, right? He's a dog. He, yeah. he, is, he is a pit bull. He let him off the leash. He makes really smart plays. He's strong, and it, and he's got that, that smaller body that people just don't see him out there. And Jack Winter always seems to hit a big three when you need it. Kyle Smith usually hits a big three when you need it, but he cannot find the, the twine there. And the Bobcats still trailing 47-29 as we approach 90 seconds inside the roundhouse. Yeah, Kyle's year had really just been an upward trajectory. Really assume this will be one over the weekend that he'll learn from and be ready Monday night. Poe, a good step through down the left block, uses a glass. It's good for two. 49-29, back to a 20-point game. I don't care who you are or how good that defense is. If you're not, if you can't hit that 40-point mark, 45 point mark in this league you're not going to win any games and bobcats haven't even hit 30 yet giannetto's run in the paint was missed Corey smith went for the rebound but gets in a tie-up 
Possession arrow is with Ames, and we'll see a hockey line change here. Jor Let It Soar is going to check into the game. Ryan Schmidt, Will Sports, as well as Tate Ring. And who else? Oh, Lamar Johnson snuck in there as well for the Bombcats. So new five on the floor for the Bobcats with 103 left to go in the game. Bobcats go to work defensively here in those white tops and bottoms. Lamar Johnson got injured against Newton earlier this year and just has struggled to get healthy and get right back there. And with a foul on the floor, we'll take a quick timeout. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB-TV. Ready to take the next step in your education? Look no further. Marshalltown Community College is your ticket to endless opportunities. Our dedicated faculty and diverse programs are your pathway to success. Whether you're pursuing a career in healthcare, industry, or earning your AA degree, MCC offers the flexibility you need. We provide convenient online classes and locations in Marshalltown and Grinnell. Picture yourself thriving at MCC. Your journey begins now. Discover more at marshalltowncommunitycollege.com. It's a 20-point game inside the roundhouse in the Highway 30 rivalry. 30 seconds to go tonight. Bobcats with the basketball. After an Ames turnover, Lamar Johnson up high. Right high post. I think that one might have been tipped by Ames. Little Cyclones get it back in transition. Lamar Johnson pokes it away from behind. Now jump a right block. No good. And Swartz with a rebound for the Bobcats. Still play for the last shot here. As Jor let it soar over the midcourt stripe. Seven seconds. He will let it soar. Boom! Oh, I love that. 49-32. As Gatliel Jor gets the final bucket here tonight. I might not that put the makes three side. I might not put up the three side, but I, uh, who am I joking? I would have done it. I may have put up both hands. I love it. That guy is one of the most confident guys coming off the bench. Yeah, I love it. I love it. 49-32, the final score. Bobcats fall inside the roundhouse in the Highway 30 rivalry. Initial reaction to loss here tonight. Bobcats just out-defensed here tonight. Most it, It's just all about toughness. Ames will just out-tough you. Zero transition points. Only three points for Kyle Smith. It's just everything that they did. There just was, we were out tough, and you yeah. will never beat Ames if you don't match their intensity. Yeah, that is for sure. Bobcats 1 in 16 in the last 17 matches. They're now 1 in 17 in their last 18 matches. A tough one and a loss here for the Bobcats. Advanced downs, and of course, uh, Mike Apple meet there at midcourt. This is Bobcat Basketball. We head to the locker room report coming up next right here on KFJB TV. Some drivers trade cars every year or every other year. Some drive their cars till they drop. Whatever kind of driver you are, Lennox Employees Credit Union is here to get you into the car for your style of driving. You're invited to go to our website, lennoxecu.com, for membership eligibility and loan rates, or call the office to talk to a loan officer. The loan process is quick and easy. Low auto loan rates from Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA. How can you help Marshalltown High School and enjoy a mouth-watering burger at the same time? By ordering the Bobcat Burger at Legends American Grill. Two quarter-pound patties with crisp bacon strips, sautéed onions and melted American cheddar, jack, and Swiss cheeses on top of fresh shredded lettuce on a toasted bun. It's absolutely delicious. One dollar from every Bobcat Burger sold is donated by Legends to Marshalltown High School activities. So, enjoy a Bobcat Burger and help MHS. The Bobcat Burger, another exclusive from Legends American grill in Marshalltown. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. 
At Honest Heating and Cooling, they take comfort seriously. Their latest offering? Smart Integrity Monitoring. Combined with an honest maintenance plan, it takes all the guessing out of home comfort. Their technicians take accurate measurements of all the necessary parameters and deliver you the truth about where your home's comfort stands. If you're not measuring, you're just guessing. That's honest. Get a Smart Integrity Monitoring Plan and let the Honest Team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. Honest Heating and Cooling. The KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Welcome into the Locker Room Report here on KFJB TV. Brandon Lewis, still in Dallas alongside me here tonight. Bobcats fall 49-32 is our final score as the Bobcats drop to 4-5. and five. They are now 3-1 uh, and one in Iowa Lions North action. Meanwhile, Ames is now 5-2. and two. They are 4-0 and oh in the Iowa Lions Conference North side of things. Well, a tough one here tonight. Leading score for the Bo uh, Bobcats. Nine points for Carter Gianetto as Kyle Smith hit a three in the third, but that was his only bucket here tonight. It was tough going against that tough. Ames little cyclone defense yeah really what we would call a gravity game it was so much physicality that he had to rush shots that he did get he only he only got five shots they didn't allow him to catch the basketball and that's where you're going to have to see some maturation in his game when the three isn't falling can he put it on the deck can he get to the line can he do different things and then on the defensive side he's very good being off ball defender getting passing lanes but they burned him on on ball coverage all night long yeah that is for sure so 49 32 the final score leading score for uh ames jameson poe with 12 as well as jack winter with 12 11 for will thomas tonight four for voss and dow had four himself and manny luth poured in four as well i i just think this is not the most exceptional scoring team we've seen out of Ames. But, boy, this is a really solid defensive team for sure. They are going to challenge a lot of people this year. Yeah, Jamison Poe is so aggressive. He's so good in help defense. And they were able, between Thomas and Poe, able to get the ball to the rack. We did a great job on Dow. He got into foul trouble, but he really didn't do anything. I don't think he had a block tonight. He averages four night. You look, Thomas had nine in the first quarter. He didn't have a lot later. Winner did have a dozen, but he didn't really impact the game terribly. It comes mm -hmm. down to Jamison Poe makes them go. My yeah. goodness. Yeah, that is for sure. Well, the Bobcats end their four-game winning streak with a loss here tonight. They'll be in action next week. There are plenty of opportunities to make up for it if they've got three games on the slate. We'll talk to head coach Mike Apple coming up in just a little bit. But when we come back, we'll get you a scoreboard update, and we'll also name our Bobcat player of the game. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB-TV. You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated, and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. There is a city within a city not far from here. The city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. With over 10,000 cars at our disposal, Jensen Ford... Hold on. That's not really how we do things at Jensen Ford. How about... It's never been a better time to buy a brand new... Um, yeah, we don't really do that either. When you're ready to buy a car, we'll be ready to help. Try this. We'll get you in and out faster than a speeding... We don't do that either. At Jensen Ford, we'll take as much time as you need to find the right vehicle. We're not just moving cars, but we're building relationships. Oh, maybe more of a... This is where your family buys the vehicles. There you go. What like that. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. Quality furniture for every room in your home. Pets Appliance and TV. For sales and service of everything appliance, come see the Pence team. 
Wayward Social, the place for bowling, games, food, and more. Wells Fargo Advisors, Marshalltown. Sports Plus, Sports Medicine Physical Therapy Center, sportsplustherapy.com. Welcome back into the Roundhouse for the Locker Room Reports as we take an area scoreboard update look. All brought to you by Central State Bank. Discover what Central State Bank can do for you. Locations in Ames, State Center, and in West Des Moines. The big news in the Iowa Alliance North, Fort Dodge. The Dodgers pick up a win over Mason City and the Riverhawks, 60-55. to BCLUW wins big over Meskwaki, 75-46. Ankeny upends Urbandale by 12, 70-58. Lincoln out last at Tumwa, 61-50. And Des Moines North defeats their Eastbourne counterparts, Des Moines East, 68-36. to And Dubuque, Dubuque Senior, 85. Cedar Rapids Jefferson, It's an interesting, 57. I don't think anyone in the history of the world has ever said it like that before. So hey, that was interesting. Well, one of a kind right here. <laughs> Dylan that, knows that one is, of a kind. That is for sure. <laughs> now time for our KFJB TV Player of the Game, all presented by Calvin Rock at Bar and Grill of Marshalltown. Well, Carter Giannetto Sr. tonight, he finishes with nine points, did pour in a three, and I uh, thought he played pretty decent defense. He had to kind of fill in for Treshawn Brooks at one point at point guard because Treshawn had to pop out of the game with an ankle injury, but... Uh, Pretty good performance overall. I know a disappointing night, though. Yeah, I think Carter competed. Yeah. He could, and we've talked to coaches, and we've talked to Carter about that. That's what they will say about him, no matter how he's shooting, what he's playing, like he competes. And he competed on the glass. He competed defensively, and he made some good plays offensively in a night where we could have used a whole lot more good offensive plays. That's our Calvin Rocket Barn Girl Player of the Game. At each game, Calvin Rocket awards a free handheld to the Bobcat Player of the Game. We'll talk to head coach Mike Apple when we come back. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFGB TV. Hey, Bobcats, this is Garrett with Calvin Rocket. I'm happy to partner up with KFJB and continue the tradition of Bobcat Player of the Week. Follow us on social media for all your Calvin favorites, new specials, and exciting news that's coming down the road. Stop on in and give us a try. We're open Monday through Thursday, 11 to 9 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 11 to 10 p.m., and Sundays for the NFL season. We'll see you at Calvin Rocket, and go Bobcats! You planned and saved for your child to go to college, but medical school after graduation was a surprise, a happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. Scouts in Marshalltown go on fun adventures. Scouts learn about the outdoors. Scouts learn character building. Scouts learn citizenship. Scouts learn life skills. Scouts learn to be leaders. Scouts go to fun summer camps and scouts get a head start in life. Marshalltown has produced over 200 Eagle Scouts in our over 70 year history and have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community. To learn more about joining scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure on! The KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Welcome back into the Locker Room Report, our post-game chat with Coach, all brought to you by Laurel Diesel Services, your locally owned qualified diesel mechanics. Final score from inside the Roundhouse, 49-32, as we bring in head coach Mike Apple. Coach, biggest thing that we knew coming into this one, Dylan alluded to it in his pregame kind of keys, just toughness and transition points here tonight going to be a couple of the big things and those are things that you, your team really struggled with here tonight but it seems like a lot of teams who play this Eames team even this version of them very good tough defensive team and they really kind of got in your skin early on yeah they did that was really the difference in the game they kind of took us took us out of our stuff uh, we had a hard time running what we wanted to um, you know really took us down late in the shot clock sometimes and uh, you know they switched basically everything made it tough for us to reverse the ball and kind of screen guys in for shots and that's that's a lot of what we're our offenses is, is kind of gets going on so um 
you know, that, that was the difference. You know, holding them to 49 was great. You know, I thought our effort was there. I thought where mm -hmm. our defense was there. We kind of held their three top guys under their average. Uh, it just came down and we couldn't score the ball. What, what was your biggest learning lesson from this game taken into the rest of the month of January? Well, you know, I just challenged our guys in the locker room. Like, we have to bring it every single day, and we have to have intensity to where we're getting in our, our guys and, and making it really hard for them to catch the ball at times. And, and then, you know, as a coaching staff, we talked about we need to do a better job of just, you know, implementing that a little bit more where the defense is, is uh, denying, and then we work on switching and, and you know, our uh, – you know, we work on cutting the rim and, and slipping to the rim when, when that when that stuff happens, just to give ourselves easier looks when, when they're doing that defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were, we were talking quite about uh, quite a bit about that in in the game. Is that switching definitely bottled up? It wasn't just that Kyle didn't shoot well; he didn't get a lot yeah. of sh a lot of shots up. So he's had a great before Christmas. Everything mm -hmm. seemed to be leveling up, leveling up. But sometimes when you're a young player and a knight. A gravity game where everything comes crashing back it can actually be a benefit sure. for you moving yeah. forward what what was Kyle like what are you speaking to Kyle after just a really bad game for him just keep his head up he's a, he's a kid that's going to keep working hard he's going to come to practice this is going to motivate him more than anything uh, you know he did get open looks uh, and in, in a game like that when it's like oh I'm not open I'm all open we just ran three or four things and he's not getting a shot and then he does that gets to be a little bit harder to make mm -hmm. those. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a learning experience for him, and, and, and he's going to, you know, I can, I can tell it's going to definitely benefit him. And when you look at also when it comes to Ames, and we were talking about this, it's almost a system in the sense is they're going to come at you like dogs off the leash, and if you can't match it, yep. you are going to be ran over. Yep. How, can, how are you going to look at this team and help them for the next time we play Ames to really – help them experience you've got to meet them where they're at right well, away i think we need to be a little more aggressive right away early on i thought we had some good actions to where we could have just took a guy one-on-one -on -one and tried to make a play and we kind of were a little hesitant uh and didn't want to didn't want to you know attack and those yep. are the situations where we watch film and learn from that and 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 uh and be ready for next time and you will have not a lot of time to do on this one because next week you've got three games, including a, a road trip on Monday night, Cedar Rapids, Jefferson. Yeah, you know, and that's what I said. You know, we, we, hey, we, we're going to learn from this. We're going to get better. And, and come Sunday, at the end of the day, we're, we need to get ready for Cedar Rapids, Jefferson, and, and be ready to play a basketball game Monday. Thanks for the time, Coach. Appreciate it. All right, that is head coach Mike Apple with us on the Locker Room Report on KFJB TV. When Mike Overton moved to Laurel, Iowa, he had a vision to have a diesel repair shop that would support his growing family and passion for working on diesel engines. Being part of the East Marshall community means ensuring that farmers, truck drivers, and businesses run smoothly. With a large building and state-of-the-art equipment, Laurel Diesel Services is always up for a challenge. When your farm trucks, semis, or other diesel equipment requires maintenance or the occasional repair, take it to Laurel Diesel Services. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Welcome in to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social. The KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Welcome back inside the Roundhouse. One final time as the Bobcat wrestling team ready to get going for tomorrow night or tomorrow morning as they host the Alley Morrison duels. You'll be able to watch that one right here on KFJB TV. Are you guys just uh, getting a sleeping bag out up there? I think we, we that probably will be our best option, actually. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, look forward to, to uh, bringing you that one. Coverage starts at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thanks so much to our great crew here tonight bringing you action. Our next game is coming up on Monday night for basketball as we'll be on the road, as Coach alluded to it, as we'll be at Cedar Rapids Jefferson. Dylan will be on the call as we'll have bonus girls coverage if time allows, as coverage will begin at 7.20, 
and you can watch it right here on KFJB TV. For our on-site producer, Zach Tomish, our radio producer, Jeff Brooks, as well as Keith Stewart, Joe Conwell on camera work. He's Dylan Dose. I'm Brandon Lewis. Have a great rest of your Friday night. You've been watching the Friday Showcase Highway 30 Rivalry right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB-TV.